Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm Mike Ferris and in this video I'm going to be going over all the steps and details involved with this vintage classic truck. All the tools and materials are down in the description box below. Don't forget to check out the description box as well for the traceable image that you can get in two standard canvas sizes. Now let's get started. Okay guys, I'm going to get started on this 11 by 14 inch pre-stretch canvas here and you can use any size you want or a hardboard canvas if you desire. And as you can see, I got my image already laid out and I did use wax transfer paper and a stylus to transfer my image that I drew out ahead of time using the grid method, which you can find on Patreon for the traceable image if you'd like help with the drawing process. So to get started, I'm going to use my number 10 flat brush to start doing the background and I'll come around the car and do the checkered floor first since the car is the foreground object and anything that goes into the car, of course, I can cover back over when I start filling in the vehicle and all that. So for now, I'm just going to start with some permanent black and titanium white to get started. And I'm just going to start with the walls, like I said, and I'm going to start with a little bit of white here and just a touch of this permanent black. And I'm actually going to dip just the tip of the brush into some water. Not much. That's just to get the paint flowing a little bit here. Okay, so something like that. A very, very light gray tone. Mostly white here. And I'm going to just start filling in this background. So let's see. Do that. Get a little bit more pigment on the brush. So I'm just going back and forth. Just kind of doing... Just these little X crisscross strokes here. Just really helps to distribute the paint evenly and helps to lay it down. Okay, I'm just gonna get a little bit more water here. So, just a teeny bit of black, just barely any. I'm talking like a pin drop is what I'm gonna use here to start with. And I'll just start coming down with this. Okay, a little bit more water maybe there we go and I don't want to put too much water or else it'll thin the paint too much and it won't lay down very well so just a little bit and Okay, so I'm just going to fill in this entire wall area up here. See if I get too much black like that, I can just come in there with more white. See, and just lighten that up, no problem at all. Okay, just going to go around the car. And as you can see, it's very transparent, this first coat, and I can see my dark traceable line here. So I'm not really worried about going into the car too much. Don't have to be exact yet. Okay, just getting some color down, some background. Okay, just grabbing more paint as I run off. Okay, so now, right in here, I'm going to do a little shadow where the wall comes together in the corner. Maybe it's sitting in a garage somewhere, and a little bit up here, so... I'm going to take a little bit of permanent black into that, just a little bit. Okay, just something like that. And I want to start right here. Kind of get that line there and just maybe something like this. Just kind of shows where those wall pieces come together. Okay, now more titanium white and not cleaning my brush. in here okay so it's really just some background not not a whole lot of detail no big deal okay and I can just kind of brush over this darker area a little bit and settle that in there a bit 
something like that. And then I want to make this shadow sort of travel outside of that a little bit. So a little bit more black and not too much. And right in here, just kind of want to do something like this and very, very light pressure. I'm just going to sort of creep the paint into that lighter value just a little bit as I bring it down. So you can just kind of something like that. Okay, just kind of showing some shadow play a little bit on the wall. And kind of do something like this. Okay, and so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to take a little bit more white and I'll blend back over this. See, just kind of like this. And that'll really settle that down and give it more of a natural look to it. See, and on this side as well. Okay, so just these little things here. No big deal. Okay, a little bit more white. And we'll do something like this. Just however, again, just background, not a big deal. Once this truck is cherry and popping off of this, no one's gonna really look too much at this background back in here anyways. But it's there, just for a little detail. I'm just a little added, I don't know. Like I said, it's like in a garage and this is the wall maybe. Okay, so let's see, a little bit more black into this and just tapping it off a little bit there and I'll just go back in here. And I'll just say something like that. Maybe a little bit more white. Just want to blend that back a little bit on both sides there. I'll just okay. So I might adjust that, maybe I don't know, but for now, just kind of do something like that and leave that for a minute. Okay, now I'm going to clean my brush. Actually, I'm not going to clean my brush. I'm going to keep going with this black and white. So now I'm going to come down here and start doing the patterns here <clears throat> for the checkered floor. And I'm going to start with some darker value here. I'm going to take some permanent black and do something like this. And same brush, I'm just going to go ahead and go with this. And I'm going to use the edge and like the corner of the brush here to get into these smaller details. If you don't have a flat brush that is fairly new and bristles that are frayed out, then I would recommend using maybe like an angle brush that will give you that edge on it so you can get into these smaller areas so that you don't go outside. And because this is black and white, if you do go outside lines, it's all good. Just again, take some white and lighten things, cover over, let them dry maybe if you need to and come back to it and make whatever you want lighter to be what it's supposed to be. So and it's gonna block in. This is just all blocking stages for now. And just gonna get this checker pattern established. What's really cool with this black and white is I love these pictures where the red just pops off of the black and white. Super cool and very effective for drawing the eye in and just really making a picture 
just be something that wows the eye and it's very capturing. I love these things. So let's see again, just the corner and the edge here. You can see just kind of like this and just fill that in. Okay, so very relaxed, just letting the brush do the work and just more or less guiding it and not really worried about how perfect things are at the moment. Okay, I'll even pick this painting up a little bit. And totally okay to do if you have to turn your painting. I might end up having to turn my painting actually along the way, I don't know yet, because sometimes when you wanna get shapes filled in and all that, ergonomics may not be very favorable to your wrist or whatever because of the position or the angle, so you might wanna turn your painting along the way and make that doable for you. Okay, little flies, no big deal. <laughs> A lot of flies in Hawaii. It's all good though. Okay, let's see. some more of that color there on my brush as it runs off. Okay, and again, using the edge of my flat brush here. Just establishing those nice lines. See that? I love these things. These are new brushes that I have, and I actually just, my lovely wife, Sonia, gave me a gift, and she bought me all kinds of paint brushes. So I have a lot of new brushes now. Super awesome, because, I mean, you know, they do wear out acrylics will wear out a brush after you use them enough times. So I try to make them last as long as possible. I try to keep them clean along the way and from uh, prevent the paint from drying on the brush. Once the paint dries on the brush, that's kind of it. You know, it's kind of over. But you can still use the brush if you want for like foliage if you're doing landscapes. So I don't recommend throwing a brush away ever. You can always find a way to use a brush no matter what make little textured things if you want sometimes. All right, so just getting that on. And again, with the edge of the brush going around this tire. Okay, and I'm just kind of pushing the paint into the canvas here with my brush as I lay it down. Okay, a little bit more water on my brush to get the paint flowing and to keep it from drying off on the brush too as well. And you can see with more water it flows a little bit better like that. Alright. So of course later when this all dries on the on the background, I'm going to go in here with some of the colors of the car, uh, a little bit of reflection into it. It's going to show the floor is shiny, and that'll look really cool when it's done. Yeah, so we'll get to that at some point. Uh, we just want to get our colors down for now. Okay.
Okay, so. Okay, a little bit more water on the brush and I'm just dipping just the tip of the brush in. A lot of bristles here. If I put too much water, like I said, it'll be too much water and then the paint will be too thin and it will just kind of be this very transparent, almost watercolor-like effect. It won't lay down very opaque like this at all. Okay, so let's see right in here. And again, around this tire, see I'm using the corner of the brush and super easy to get around stuff like that when you use brushes like this that are all, when you have all the bristles together, of course. Okay, so something like that and see it's not going to be so neat sometimes you're going to have maybe something go out of your lines every now and again but it's all good see when it this dries and acrylics as you know dries quick i can come in there and cover that over and adjust that line and make it straight and all that so really not worried about how neat it looks right now like i said just getting color where it goes and just allowing this paint to get laid down covered over and all that so Adjustments are easy in the acrylic world. It's dry, so it dries. Like I said, when it dries fast, you can really cover anything over anytime and reshape things, adjust the color on something, add to it to make a color pop a little bit more because of the underneath color to it. So, and just let all these things happen. So I say relax, don't get too caught up in perfection and how neat everything has to be right away because. First coat, the first layer of acrylics is never, it's never neat. And you really don't want it to be because that underneath abstract mess really works in your advantage when you put more layers on top of it to build that depth and texture and realism. When you have these little things that are showing through a little bit instead of one flat dead color that is really has no dimension or depth at all. It's just really flat that way. So you really want some of these things to happen. Okay, let's go around our fender here. So honestly, I kind of, I really wish that my other videos, I would have been able to have the setup that I do now and I didn't back then. And I made a more speed lapse and did a voiceover with them. And I hope those videos have inspired and have taught some things and that you guys were able to watch those and really get a lot out of them. And now that I have more of a setup in this microphone and, a, and my own studio now, it's so much better and I can do these real, real time full length videos and I hope that these are clear and concise lessons that you guys can really follow. And any feedback I would appreciate if you guys would like to see something that would help me to make these videos more clear and um, anything I can do to improve anything. I'm always looking to get better, whether that's at painting, teaching it, uh, making the videos more clear and all of that. So I really want you guys to succeed and be able to enjoy painting and to really find your niche. And really, I just want to show you guys the basic techniques that I've learned that work just for about any kind of painting that you can think of and be able to use those and turn loose and 
really do anything that you want to do and express yourself the way that you were meant to with this craft and I hope that I am able to deliver that to you guys and inspire you and even if you've painted and you're an experienced painter I hope I can bring and add more inspiration to your world and um, again if you guys have questions comments or anything like that please let me know I'm doing this for you guys and like I said I want to share with you something that has really blessed me and just one of the things in life that I believe God gives us sometimes to, as uh, things we can lay hold of and just things to do and enjoy in life like this. Okay, got some little stuff out back here happening. And I'll just say that's good right there. Okay, so without cleaning again, I'm going to pick up some white now. I don't want it completely white checkered uh, squares, but I do want to have a little bit of an off white. And I'll go ahead now with this. I'm going to do something like this. Okay, just going to bring that up to the line here. And again, having a flat brush with all the bristles intact, it really makes it easy to do that. So when they're all frayed out, of course, they're, they want to go everywhere. Okay, something like that. Just put that in. I'm going to come up here. So feel free, you don't have to follow me to a T. Maybe I'm starting with these squares here, but you get the general idea. Maybe you want to come over here and start filling these in, you know, like this or whatever. Whatever. It's all good. As long as you have your pattern, you can, you know, you can make this the light one and this the dark one if you want, just as long as they're staggered in their array to make it that checkered look. So, again, and maybe if you want to change it up and you put the dark in the wrong spot no problem again you can let that dry and you can come back in and make it at whatever you want to be all right so let me get that filled here okay went in a little bit no big deal i'll adjust that when that dries it's all good. Okay, pick this up a little bit. I'll probably take a smaller brush when I come in here and detail this up and make all the lines really well. And you know, like right here, I got that gap. I'll bring this up a little higher and I'll have it meet up with this. I'm gonna take that gap away in time. And again, not worried about all the perfection and the exacts. I mean, I'm getting it close, but I'll come in later. Fix all that up real nice. Okay. Okay, let's see. Boom. Let's take this across and take this across. So, when I'm doing lines, I recommend using the edge to go across instead of like this to go across because what ends up happening is when you push with the brush, it tends to go out of your lines and it's too easy to do that. So I always say, use the edge of your brush when you come up to a line like this instead of using the side of your brush like this to do that. 
But again, if you have the magic touch and you find that doing it this way works, do it that way. Do it the way that works for you. This is again, just suggestions and recommendations. And again, I'm just I'm here to show you guys the things that have worked for me and just the basic general techniques that you can really use anywhere on any piece. And my hope and prayer is that you guys can, again, pick these up and do them in your way that works for you and really be able to turn loose on anything and have success at it and really enjoy. That's the biggest thing. Enjoy the journey of painting and the process involved. And as well as the results, of course, you want to be happy with your results. And, you know, one thing that Bob Ross said that I like, and this is funny because he will say sometimes at the end of his painting shows, he'll say, I hope that you are plagued with dissatisfaction when you're done with your painting in a way where it makes you want to strive to become better. <laughs> and so when he first said that, I was like, huh, why do I want to be displeased with my result, man? I want to be happy with my painting and I think everybody should be happy with their painting I think it should be fun and enjoyable but at the same time I see what he's saying and I and I do agree to a point where it's like you do want to be able to you you do want to strive to get better and it's always nice to push for more you know and that's a good thing because I tell you when you plateau whether it's in fitness or eating healthy or painting or whatever you do in life Plateaus come and it just, that kind of tends to kill or sort of bring down a little bit the uh, joy or the the drive, I guess, and whatever it is you're doing. So it's always good to have variety and mix things up and want more because then it's like your journey stays fresh that way and boredom stays out of the picture, literally, no pun intended, out of the picture. And... It really uh, it allows you to take it to the next level. It allows you to stay teachable. And I think that's a good thing in everything that we do. There's always room for growth that way. And I think that's a very important part of any journey is to continue to grow in that and to want more and to experience more and have new goals that you can accomplish. That makes life very purposeful and meaningful in that way. So, just getting this in. Like I said, I don't care how neat it is yet. I mean, I'm not going too crazy, but not all perfectionist. And and so, see under here, there's going to be a little bit of a shadow cast, and I'll get to this later. But for now, I'm just getting the general color and location of this checkered design. And I'll darken this down a little bit as shadow showing cast it onto the floor to make that more realistic in time. So, we'll adjust that when we do. And just go on something like this. Okay, let's see. And it looks like also right here. And I'll stop that here because this is going to be very dark in here. Okay, so let's see. I'm thinking, what do I do here? Go right here. Okay, and so also... Here. Okay, so I'm just going to let this dry for now down here, and I'm going to come back in there later and fix all the lines and everything else, but just getting the general color where it goes. Now I want to start our vehicle. The showcase of this piece here, the highlight, the main course. Okay, so what I did now, I'm adding my colors now to the palette. I've got here some crimson red, magenta red, cad orange, 
some phthalo blue and some raw umber here. And I've got my number 12 angle brush here. As you know, in my other videos, I've said I love these brushes with that extra tip on it and all these other bristles out of the way that angles down because now I can get really precise with that corner and just get these nice crisp lines of this vehicle. See where I went into it with my background? Like I said, no big deal on that, but this is really going to take care of that. And with that said, I am just going to basically block in the general values where they go. I'm not worried about anything at all right now with details. This is just getting color established. So with that, I'm going to start with some of this crimson and I'm just going to tap the brush in and pull it through and maybe kind of wiggle it as I pull it and then pull it through again. And it really brings it to a nice crisp edge. And that's going to be very nice to get these nice precise lines and follow the curve and all that of the vehicle. So I'm going to go in right here and just kind of use the, the edge, like I said, the corner of the brush. I'll do something like this. See, and again, I don't recommend going like this because as you can see, as you push more, it just tends to go outside. I recommend doing the edge like this and then filling in the rest up to that line. And that will make all the difference. And because this is a red, very opaque color, I do recommend this angle brush because like I said, with its precision, it's really going to help to stay on those lines. Because if you do go out, you can cover it up. But because it's against a light background, it's going to take a few more coats and some time to cover that up. So to save you time and paint and all that, I would recommend being extra careful on this. But not the end of the world. Not the end of the world if you do go outside the lines. It can be done. No doubt. So... See, and then I can just pull from this edge here now that I got the line established and pull that paint into the car. See, and I can get everything else filled in like it's supposed to be. See, and it just really, this brush is awesome for this. Anytime I do anything with objects or still life, I always recommend an angle brush at some point because it's super effective when you want to make crisp, precise lines and staying inside your lines is this is like the best brush to use, I think. So I'm just kind of doing something like this. Not really much to it. It's super easy. You don't have to be good at drawing. That's why I provide the traceable for the drawing image, as you can see. And I use the grid method because I'll be honest, I'm not that good at drawing. I have to erase a lot and get my angles and perspectives in order to have those correct. And it's just what I got to do. So I do what I got to do in order to establish this. And then I can start putting the values of paint where they go and making beauty out of what was a struggle, I guess, to draw at first. I don't know, but if you don't need the traceable because maybe you are good at drawing, more power to you. Do what you want to do. This is your world. But it is there if you want it and if you do need it. Okay, just kind of smoothing out the brush strokes a little bit. And I'm not really worried about the brush strokes, honestly. This is just the first coat. I am going to put more than one layer down because, as you know, in acrylics, that first coat never looks good. It's always really transparent. And it does take at least a couple of coats to do something that isn't going to look all stroked out and, you know, transparent and messy. So... I don't really mind. And I think I will get a bigger brush, but I think I'm just going to use this actually to get the edges established, like I said, and then I'll switch to a bigger brush to cover more ground. And I don't have to spend forever trying to fill everything in. What's that? You are good at drawing. You just don't have the patience to do it. You may be right. I've seen you draw. You're good. My wife says I'm good at drawing. She's seen me draw. Well, that may be true. But like she said, I don't know. I don't care for drawing so much. It's really the painting that I want to get to. It's like, <coughs> hurry up and get this drawing made so I can start putting the color down and painting it. That's really what I'm after. 
So, so you're just using the corner of the brush like this. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, just again pulling that paint down into it. And we got this nice line and everything established really well. Okay, so you can still see my line a bit here. I'll edit out some things. You know, for, for the it's just feeling really overwhelmed, and I'm glad I just came here. Yeah, I'm glad you came here. I really am. Okay, so down here there's going to be some dark value, so I'm not terribly too worried about going outside my lines. Although I am staying in them because, as you know, a dark value will easily. And I, when I say easily, I mean like right away the first coat will cover over a lighter value like red. And especially anything lighter than that. So I'm not going to cry about that. <laughs> so There we go. Something like that. And it's important to, to make sure you have some water on your brush. Don't let it get too dry. Especially when you're trying to do crisp you know, lines and stay inside the lines because if it's too dry, it'll, it'll tend to fuzz and go outside of those lines and staying in them really nice like this. So again, I'm just going to use the corner of the angle and come down. Just want to get that line established. And again, pulling that paint in. You know, and the thing is too, being that this is uh, not the smallest angle brush, if you want in these smaller areas, you definitely can take a very new, or newer, I should say, uh, number two flat brush, if that's what you want to use. And you can definitely use the edge of that if the bristles aren't all frayed out. And that is perfect too for getting into small areas as well. At this point, I'm pretty comfortable using bigger brushes in small areas as long as I got a nice edge and a tip that I can use. All those other bristles don't bother me. But if they are something that overwhelms you, definitely use a smaller brush if you need to. Okay, let's see where I'm at here. Just get these general values. And I'm gonna just, I think I'm just gonna do the whole car with this first coat of this crimson red. And then on top of this value, I can start changing the values and building them up and putting those where they go because I think it adds more depth and volume and dimension with more layers on top of one another like that. Instead of just trying to go for details and perfect exact colors all at once so my recommendation in the acrylic world do not worry and get caught up too much with exact colors and details right away because if you do that will be very frustrating if you do do it that way um because acrylics i mean i'm telling you they're just not going to do what you want them to do that first layer they just won't it's not meant to that's not the way this pigment is it does take layers and colors on top of one another and adjustments that work together to bring about the kind of red or the kind of color that you want to put down and, and convey within your painting to be a certain way. So let's see, I'm going to bring down this here. Okay, so just all of these shapes here with the traceable as I have, like I said, 
just going to go around those respectively and put everything where it goes in its general location. So there we go. See, you can see all these openings and like it's all dark here and then light here. I don't really care. Like I said, first coat. Just getting color where it goes. I don't really care right now. And I think what I'm going to do, because I want to save this line and have the perspective of it be like it should, um, I'm going to kind of leave a gap here just so I don't lose that. And I don't have to worry about covering up all of it or just as long as I can see pretty much where it goes. And yeah, something like that. See, it's going to end about right here in line where this comes together right there. So. And with the angle brush, I don't really want to go this way. I want to go that way so that it it goes towards the point instead of away from it to keep the brushes intact so I don't wear it out like that. So it's really for me, it's, it's more of a precision painting with it. And then once, like I said, I get the lines established, I can use a bigger brush and fill in more. Even though I did fill this in a little bit, but you know, it's really up to you. But to make your angle brush last and get the most out of it, I recommend not going this way. You know, like I said, when you paint with it, don't paint where the, where it goes towards this or away from it. I mean, go in the direction where it leads off from the tip instead of that way, that way instead. Okay, with that tip again, just getting around this little guy. I don't want to lose that. Okay, so very easily, just like that, doing this brush. Super excellent for doing this. See that? Bang. Just go around that very easily. And. Load more paint up as it gets low. All good. All right, man. Just keeping these shapes alive. Following the curve here. All right, so let's see. Let's go around this guy. And again, not too worried. This is going to be dark under here. This will be black. So anything I go outside the lines with on this red, it's when you go outside the lines into a light value with a darker color like red or black that you are going to have to spend more time covering that up. But with dark values, 
all good. Not going to worry too much about that. Just getting around this guy. All right, so. using the edge all together the entire edge here of the brush and we just get that in line established very well that way okay scooping up more paint there quite a bit on my brush and able to cover all this area here and I think I will get a bigger brush here in a moment but I'm just getting the color where I want it for now and also right here I don't want to go all the way to this line because I want to leave that showing a little bit so I don't lose that because that will be a little bit of a shadow in there to show some body detail and curve of the car and all of those things so just kind of leaving that so I don't lose where that is and I can even go something like that if I wanted to see how I did that just kind of bent the bristles and just kind of used it to turn it within the shape there that may take a bit of practice but if you're feeling confident go for it it's very effective see I can really fill that in a lot quicker that way and a lot and very effective instead of you know trying to do it all with the edge all the time so whatever again whatever you're comfortable with do what works for you. These are some things that I've kind of found that work for me that I can get away with and do really well with. Okay, just the very edge of the brush too, that very that very corner tip there of this angle. See all these other bristles are out of my way. That's what I love about this. I can just use just the very tip and really get those last details or that last edge or corner or whatever it is. Super precise like that. Very easy to use this brush. Okay, and okay, going up to the tire right there with the body of the car, and okay, something like that. And again, I want to leave a little gap here because there's a value change here and some body detail and some reflection type stuff that's gonna be happening. So again, I don't wanna lose where I put that. So I'm just going to kind of do this. And I can cover up most of it, but as long as I leave some of this white showing and I got that line established there, and I'm pretty good, I, I know where I'm at with that. And voila, like that. We got something going on here. Getting her filled in. 
And once I get all this filled in and established, this is going to be a lot easier to just work within my parameters and know where to set different value tones as I start laying stuff on top of this coat. And uh, it will be very simple to work with. So I think what you're going to find with acrylics, the hardest stages of it is that first blocking stage because, you know, with all that mess going on, it's really hard to see like, God, how am I going to get that to shine? Or how am I going to get this color to be the way it should be? When you look at that first coat, it's like, ugh doesn't look anything like it should. And that's really just understanding the way that this pigment works. It's not designed to be anything like it should on that first coat. That's why I say you really just have to trust the process and know that acrylic medium is something that takes more than one layer and takes different colors of adjustment on top of other colors because when all those work together, that's what in turn makes it look the way it does in the end and you look at that and you go man that looks so real that looks like a a real shiny metal surface or you know whatever it is you're painting and it's because you have all those values playing with one another and on top of one another and that's just how it goes it's not supposed to be finished by any means at first that's why I call it blocking stages, because it's really that's really what you're doing. You're just blocking in where things go and their general values so that you have something to work with. Okay, let's see. Oh, I see, okay. Okay, let's see where we're at now is, lock that in, and again, there's a line here for separation and different value change to show texture and dimension on the body. I'm going to just leave another gap here between this piece of the car and this part of the, the part that sticks out and curves out a little bit. And really these lines are just guides so that I know where I want to change my value colors to show the dimension and the depth between shadow and lights and what tones of colors I'm going to be using where. That's why I have that motto, put the color where it goes, because where you put the color is going to tell the story to the viewer's eye of exactly what's happening. Is something flat? Is it round? Is it curved? Is it, you know, what is it? What's going on with it? Okay, and right here, I'll go to the line because this is the end right here of the bed. Just fill that in. And again, leaving a little gap here for change. So I know where that change is and the value of where they need to be placed and how they're going to play together. Okay. I forgot to get this, didn't I? Let's fill the rest of this in here. Okay, something like that to start with. I got it pretty well established, I think. 
And with that, I'm gonna clean my angle brush now. So I've got two jars. I've got one that has a bunch of rubber pegs that are all different sizes and shapes that when I go into my jar, it'll help to knock all the paint off the brush. And then I'm gonna go into a final rinse jar. That way I don't contaminate any new colors with dirty water. So I recommend two cleaning jars, one for cleaning and then the other one for a final rinse. Okay, so as you can see, nice and clean. And I like to give it this a little bit sometimes and it really puts the bristles back together. So when it dries, it stays intact. It's just a good way to take care of your brushes that way. I think I'll take my number six flat brush here. And I'm gonna continue on with that same crimson and I'm gonna load this up. And I'm gonna continue now and fill in the rest of everything. And again, not worried about all the strokes and how neat it is, it's just still the first coat. And again, with this line, I'm gonna leave a bit of a gap. A bit of a gap as you can see all these little lines here within the truck so I know about where to go with my values when I come back in and start playing in different values and building this up okay and right here it kind of it, it got kind of covered up here but I'm not worried about it because I can see where it's going and I know that it's gonna end up somewhere about in here so that'll be okay. And it's this line here that I'll work at all. Keep a little gap there. Okay, and again, leaving this line, I'm running out of paint, but I'm just trying to establish this line here so I know where that's going to be later. Okay, load more paint and continuing on here. Okay, being a little careful here with this red, I don't want to take it into, if I can help it, into this chrome area because this is going to be some lighter values, of course, and with red going into it, if I really get into that too much with red, it's going to be quite a bit of, well, I don't know about quite a bit, but it's going to be a few more layers of basically trying to cover it up, so it's not involved in that. So I want to watch that a little bit, just kind of just doing something like that. Okay, loading more paint. And I think that, oh, okay, never mind. For some reason I was looking at it too closely and I was thinking, did I cover my door handle up? And it's up here and I was like, it's not down here. So I'm good. <laughs> Every now and again, I'm like, wait a minute, did I cover something up? 
Okay, again, leaving that little line right there. Okay, I don't want to fill that all up. Okay, and again, load more paint. Okay, so blocking stages, I'll tell you, it's really simple. You just put some paint on the brush and we're just, we're just going for it. Not worried about how neat, how this or that. I mean, being obviously careful around where we need to be for the most part, but it's all good. Okay, I'm gonna clean this number six flat brush off. And then again, rinse it in my final rinse jar. And I've got a nice, clean brush if it's bristles still intact you really want to make sure that your bristles you know you kind of do this maybe after you clean it off if you're gonna set it aside and not use it for a minute and that really keeps your brush fresh and from wearing out too fast it preserves the life of it pretty well that way okay so now I'm gonna get I think I'm going to get my number four flat brush now, and I'm going to start blocking in some other areas now. I'll get some dark values where they go, and again, just block everything in. Okay, so I've got my number four flat brush here, and I'm going to continue on and do some other values and block in some other stuff while this dries. And so what I'm going to say now is I'm going to take some permanent black. Actually, I'm going to wet this brush, just a little bit of water, so we can get this guy flowing right. Okay, some permanent black, just loading up the brush here, and I'm going to start under here and start grabbing this and putting it. See something like that using the edge of the brush and I'm just gonna start blocking in where our dark colors go now so again just filling this in you're gonna find with black of course that it's a lot easier to have more of a finished look with that because black is very very forgiving very easy to just cover anything with black and as you can see this first coat looks much better than this first coat of red and even still it doesn't hurt to put another coat of black down but it's definitely looks a lot better your first coat with black than it does other colors so I'm just gonna block this in and bring this down here to this window area Okay, loading more paint. shapes here very easy all right something like that
Okay, and then down here a little bit, there's gonna be a little bit of a black streak. Let me get a little bit more pigment on my brush here. Okay, load that up a little bit. And again, using the very edge of this flat brush, like I said, I've got several new brushes because my lovely wife decided to bless me and get me a couple sets of paint brushes. So now I have several, which is awesome because I won't need to buy any for a while. But yeah, it's nice to have nice brushes that are new that have that edge on them. Fresh new brushes that you can really get precise lines and details with and so you can do little stuff like that with the edge of it all right loading up some more black here and let's continue on Okay, I'm going to flip this brush over where there's a new edge. That other one was kind of coming out there on me. So it helps to turn the brush over sometimes because maybe you're using one side of the corner and then it wears out so then you turn it over use the other corner that's freshly loaded that you haven't touched or used yet all good okay and i'm just going to fill this in this is going to be a little different value with some light playing off of it but i'll adjust that in a moment i just want to get the color established generally for now so i will hit this edge here And I'm just going to kiss the edge right here of this with that black. See, just a little bit like that. That's it. And now we're getting some stuff detailed and established here. And now right here, there's going to be this line that... comes down like so. Maybe something like that, maybe a little bit fatter. So I'll press a little bit harder with my brush, not too much harder. And you can see when you do that, it makes a fatter line here. So obviously when I don't push it very hard at all, it just uses the edge of the brush and you can make these really skinny lines. And then of course, if I push harder, I can get a fatter line. So depending on what you want to do, how wide you want a line to be. And in this case, that's all I'm going to do with that one right there. And so now let's see, moving right along, I'm going to go in here with that black, right? Like so. And I'll just take it to about right here in this area. And again, using the edge to bring that line down and establish it where I want it, making it nice and clean like so. And then I'm going to 
going to come across. And I'm going to leave this open for something else later right there to show some reflection and highlight there, but I don't want black. I don't want to have to spend a while covering black up too much right there. Okay, and then I'm going to have it kind of do something like this. Okay, so some shapes I didn't put down. I didn't, I didn't want to put exactly everything down because I do enjoy the freedom of painting and doing kind of what I want to do within the parameters because I feel that within the parameters, the basic layout, I have the freedom to do that and it's not really going to matter and it's really something that I can get creative with in that way. So I tend to not put exactly everything down. Like if you've ever seen my other paintings, like when I do bokeh, you know, out of focus, blurry, like city light paintings. I won't put all the bokeh lights in, but I'll put like the major ones that are like the brightest and the main ones that pretty much give me the, the playing field of where I'm going to basically be playing all these different other lights in with it. And it allows me to put maybe some extras or, you know, maybe change the color if I want to on some of them, you know, compared to an image that I'm looking at or whatever. So you know, just kind of allows me to be free within that and make it my own thing, but have it be, like I said, within the parameters that it should be to, to give the look that I want it to have. So, obviously I didn't put this shape in here. I created that on my own. You can kind of do what you want to do, but that's going to be pretty much a reflection or reflective highlight later. So, you know, reflections don't really have right or wrong shapes as long as you follow the, you know, the path that it's reflecting on or whatever. You can pretty much do what you want to do with those. So I'll just go down here. And using, again, the very edge of the flat brush, and I can get that nice fine line established there. Okay, and let's bring this down and fill the rest of this in right here. Okay, so getting things laid out where they go. And we're on to something here. So, before I get to the tire, I'm going to get to the shadow first because... Let's see, loading more paint. Because, you know, I want to be able to tell where the tire is within this shadow area. So there's going to be some gray within the black tire to show highlight and how the light's hitting the tire. And also using that to show the dimension and the, you know, the 3D look of that tire within this, uh, within this area here. So again, just using the edge of the flat brush to establish around this tire very nicely and it's kind of like that just bending the bristles around this stuff that's a neat thing about the bristles they bend of course so you can use that to your advantage to follow the shape of something as you press down you can Bend these however you need to to get around something. Okay, something like that. All right, let's see. Bring this down. Have it meet up with that red there and. all the way down okay again a little more paint and a little bit more water so one thing you can do too if you don't want to dip your brush into water you can also take a spray bottle if you have one and just lightly give it a couple shots into your paint on your palette if you want to do that that keeps it wet and flowing well um, I don't usually do that but you can 
I've seen others do that before. Totally works well. I just, I dip mine into the water. It's just easier for me. It's just right there. I don't have to grab an extra thing, but teach their own, you know, whatever you prefer. It's all good. I love how free this craft is with acrylic painting and just how fast, like I said, the paint's dry and how you can fix anything or adjust anything. And it really allows you to find your niche in a very forgiving way. It's not the end of the world, you know, if you don't get it right the first time or it's not exactly like it should be right away because you can just cover something if you don't like it and it's no big deal. And you can really find what brushes work for you and how you want to use them to achieve your painting and how you want to put that down. So... That's why I laugh, you know, when people say, like, you must do it this way, or the only way to do something is like this. It's like, there's so many ways to do something. It's like, why does it have to be just one way? You know, to me, that just kind of kills the joy of painting, for me anyway, I don't know. It's like, if you don't have options, and you don't have different ways that you can have fun with stuff, then if you're all serious all the time, and you know... <laughs> What's the point, you know what I mean? <clears throat> painting should be fun. It's a leisure thing. People don't need paintings. They don't need art. I mean, people need food. You know, they need to make money. But you don't need to do art. And because you don't need to do art, it should purely be enjoyable, I think. It should be totally fun. Something that you can relieve stress and get away from stress. If it's stressing you out, then perhaps the way of going about it or the perspective needs to change, you know, because it's so forgiving and it's so free. It gets such a free world, you know, it's, it doesn't have to be all serious and stringent and strict and all that. If you want something really strict and stringent like that, do origami. Origami is something that you really have to be really exact at. I've done, I did origami for years, and I'll tell you, it's you really got to make your folds and everything that you do in that line up exact. Especially when you do, you know, complex models that have several folds, or else one thing leads to another, and then at the end of the model, you're not going to have enough paper. You're not going to be able to fold it and have it be what it should be because it's it's really got to lay out perfect but with painting heck no you can do what you want with that you can fix it however adjust it however there's never a mistake and if you want it to be a happy accident you can definitely choose that but you don't have to definitely don't have to and it's really all up to you so let's see, I am going to go right here. There's a little black, a little separation on the body between the chrome fender and the red body here. And let's see, maybe I can get in here without turning my painting. Let's see if I can do that. Yeah, I can. Yeah, I think I'm going to turn it. See, so ergonomics aren't being very friendly to me right now in this position, so it's all good. I'm going to turn my canvas, and I'm going to go continue on with the edge of this flat brush. Get that nice line in there. You can definitely use your angle brush. Heck, you can even use a script liner brush if that's what you're comfortable with. Script liners, you know, they take a little bit of practice, but if you've been using them, you can even use that to do this if you want. If you do use a script liner, make sure you put enough water on that because if you don't, you're going to probably not get this nice line and it's going to be all fuzzy and frayed out and it's going to go into areas you don't really want it to be and it won't be very crisp if you don't have enough water on that kind of brush. So script liners are kind of unique in that way. It takes a lot of water on those things to really get that paint to flow and get a crisp line with the script liner brush or it just will just kind of stick and slip and give you a really fuzzy frayed outline instead of a nice crisp you know sharp line 
Okay, so I'm cleaning my number four flat brush here, going into that rinse jar again and drying it out and just kind of doing this again. Okay, so it's established well. And let's move on. Let's, I want to go now onto the tire and for that, what I want to do is, well, actually I'll tell you what, before I do that, I'm going to continue with this black actually, same brush. And I'm going to load this up again. And I'm going to go into these areas of the tire here between these chrome uh, areas of the rims here and fill in this in-between stuff here. And let's see, I, I'm going to... actually leave some of this open. I'm not going to cover all that up. I want another piece of the rim showing right there. So I'll just have a gap that goes about to right there. And again, using the edge of the, uh, the corner of the brush. See, and I can get those nice established shapes here very well with this. Again, if you don't have a nice flat, uh, a nice flat brush with all the bristles intact, definitely use an angle brush that does, that gives you that tip on it. Uh, is a big problem solver and a brush I highly recommend. Like I said, it really does a good job getting in between stuff. But if you're like me and you have new brushes, maybe you don't always need your angle brush because you've got a nice edge on these new flat brushes that'll do that job just as well. So let's see. Getting this down. Okay, something like that. I'm thinking. However you want these shapes to be, you know, you can do what you want. I'll do that. And I'll do this. See, just using these bristles to get in these shapes very well like this. Boom, just like that. Okay, smoothing that out a little bit, brushing that extra paint over where it's thinned out, and just moving it around to be where it should be. So I can get this coat evened out a little bit. Okay, I'm going to load my brush again because the bristles are kind of coming apart. So as you can see, I'll take this and just kind of wiggle it and it brings those all back together very nice. Okay, and I can reestablish this nice detail in here. It makes it easier to get in here again and get around these shapes and get them all precisely filled in the way they should be. All right, just kind of like that. Okay, just like that.
All right, how about that? Something like so. And I'm gonna come in here and sort of do some things. I didn't fill any patterns in back here because this tire is kind of, you know, back in the distance a little bit and the angle that it is, it's kind of hard to see, you know, what's going on. And I'm just gonna sort of kind of make this up a little bit. You can do kind of however, but it's all good. Maybe something like this. And well, I don't know, something like that. <laughs> however, you can totally adjust this however when you want, however you want to do that. Okay, I'm just gonna sort of let that hang right now for the moment. All right, and it looks like maybe in here, there's a little bit of some black playing within this chrome area. kind of let that hang out for a minute there and let's see I'm going to get this right here there's a little black spot right in there okay and let's see it looks like under here a little bit some black as well. Okay, maybe something like this. I'm just going to bring this down and have that shape kind of come in like this. So as I said, I didn't make every last shape, but I'm leaving some room to kind of do what I want to do and experiment and have some fun with that. Okay, I'll strike a little black right there. And let's see. Hmm. All right. All good. line up a little bit there so it looks like it's okay something like that and kind of widen this down here so something like that a little adjustment okay so now let's do actually a little bit of black right now let's see I'm gonna load this brush again a little bit of black right here on the very edge of this headlight Okay, kind of like that. And with this, I kind of wasn't done bringing this down. I'm going to bring this down into here. And just sort of, I don't know, kind of bring it down and kind of hang, let it hang for a minute right there. All right, so now what I want to do is I want to go into some white and I want to make this gray now. And for the tire, I just want to block it in like this. You 
can kind of see that there. Maybe I'll go a little bit lighter so we can see that better. So I'll adjust this too. I'm going to play around with these tire colors a little bit and, you know, get some more gray where it goes for some more light and more black where it's fading off into the shadow area here. So maybe something like this. This is a little bit lighter. And we know where this tire is at. So a lot of times with acrylics, before I get things established or whatever, I'll just take a color, even if it's not the final color, especially if it's not the final color, and I'll put that down first because as you can see, this tire is black and it's not gonna stay completely gray, but for now, when it comes to blocking, I wanna be able to know what I have to work with here as far as what part of the tire is in the shadow and how it transitions more into the light between this dark and where the tire is within this shadow because obviously the tire is black but then the shadow underneath the car is also black so right now with blocking a lot of what blocking stages do is establish where things end and begin so that you don't lose your picture along the way and that's really important because you want to be able to see what it is that you're adjusting and where things are at and where they should be so blocking is a really good, important first steps in making that happen. And it's just establishing more or less the layout of the, of the drawing that you're painting. So I'm just going to block this whole tire in right now with just this gray value. And I'll come back in and I'm going to adjust some things up and add some texture to it with some different values playing on with this gray and leaving some of it to show for highlight and all of that good stuff. But like I said, in order to do that, you have to have something established first. So that's why this messy first coat is a must. You have to have that to work in your favor to be able to show you where that's going to be. So with that, just gonna go around and I'm gonna leave this here because this gray against this gray kind of loses the bottom of this tire so I'm gonna change to black in just a minute but I'm gonna continue with this gray first before I do that so just gonna load up some more of that gray and some of that or black and some of that white to get that gray and you can see here I don't have that much water on the brush so it's not flowing quite like I want to there we go I've got some more water on it now and now we're gonna see how when you put water now out of out a bit it's going to flow so much better Let's see just like this and you can really fill this in so much better that way okay so I'm just gonna go down Like I said, down here, I'm going to wipe all that paint off onto my cloth that I have over my table that I have set down. Okay, and now I'm just going to pick up black and let's load that up. And down here, I want to see the difference between the tire and the floor. So again, blocking stages is all about establishing where things are before we start getting the details with their general colors of course but not their final colors you never get your final color usually at all with your first coats first coats like i said is just for establishing and then we build on top of that so we know where we're at when we build and with what colors it's kind of like a form and pouring concrete. You want to build your form and then pour, right? So that the concrete goes where it's supposed to instead of all over the place. Like, hey man, what's this mess doing here? <laughs> Who's the contractor on this job? Anyway, so let's get this filled in here with that. Right. Going up 
up to our chrome line here. And booyah, just like that. See, we've got our, we can see where our tires, I'm just gonna fade this up a little bit, all good. And just like that, it's all, no big deal. And oops, I might've gone into there a little bit, no big deal. Okay. There it is, so something like that. And in the same way, I will take some more black and I will establish this here and come in here like this. Oops, let's see. Okay, because of the perspective, obviously, it's going to be a lot thinner out here. See, this is why I like to draw it out first, because I'll tell you, if you don't, then you've got to start painting something that's not established with lines yet, and it's, you know, you might go outside or the perspective could be wrong, and then you might find yourself having to cover up dark value over, you know, where it spilled into some light areas because it wasn't drawn out first. So, you know, to each their own, if you're really good at drawing and you can get that down the first time, maybe you don't need to draw this out first. I don't know, but I do. So I draw mine first. <laughs> it's what I prefer when I personally do it. But again, in your world, if you're feeling like a challenge and you love, you know, drawing and you're can lay it down right away the first time, especially with paint and not have to fix a lot of out of bounds or then definitely go for it, you know, if that's your thing. More power to you. I think it's awesome if you can do that. As somebody that can that can really put down the drawing the first time, I'm just like, man, that's good. I really admire people that can do that. And you know, I think people that can paint things out of their own heads without looking at something is probably really about mind control. Meaning, well, when I say mind control, I don't mean it in a bad way. I mean, they have such control of their mind and their thoughts that they can keep it so still that I feel like they're still looking at something, but it's in their head and it's so consistent that they can keep that enough or remember it enough to where they can just go for it and it works because they're able to do that and I think that's awesome people that can do that that's that's really admirable to me I really look up to people that can pull that off like that um, like I said me I need the help of drawing out first what I see and you know maybe if I could maybe if I condition my mind to you know I could take a little practices of thinking something simple like maybe a vase or like an apple something with a simple shape to start off with and maybe I can picture it in my head with all the different values and how it's going to look and start practicing exercising my mind to hold an image that I can look at consistently with my thoughts and then practice that like a muscle you know strengthen that then I'm thinking at some point maybe I can start really painting things out of my own head and never having to look at something ever again. But um, I honestly haven't really practiced any of that yet at this point, but it's something that I can see and I'm, I'm, I'm really, I'm analyzing, I'm really thinking it out, you know, I'm really looking at how somebody can do that. And to me, that's what makes sense at this point. I'm not sure how else anybody would be able to do that, but like anything, if you exercise something and practice, it'll get stronger, I'm sure. So maybe I'll start doing that down the road on my free time when I do paintings without being in, you know, on the video. We'll see. 
for now I'm just having fun. Like I said, painting should be fun. Whatever you do in the art world, it should be something you enjoy because it's not something that you have to do, but it's something that should be enjoyed. So let's see, I'm gonna go ahead with that and let that hang for a little bit. And I'm gonna go ahead and block in now some stuff here as well as the rest of this. And then I'm gonna come back in and put another coat of this crimson down and fill in all these little gaps here and get it really full before I start adding different values and playing stuff around and building it up that way. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take and start building on some areas here. Um, first thing I'm gonna do is get some more white down since I'm running low on that. I think one of the biggest things you'll find in painting too is white, you know, because no matter what paintings you do, you're always gonna have white involved with just about every value you put in a painting because you need it to lighten the color for sure. So I tend to run out of that first before anything else. So definitely wanna have enough of that down. And so I'm gonna get this gray again. And I'm thinking something about like this, maybe that, that tone or value. And I'm not going to worry about details. Like I said, I'm going to just block in the general color. There's going to be a lot of grays in here. And there'll be some whites that are going to be popping off of this for highlight. But I'll get to that. And I'm going to leave this little gap here because, again, I want to take some dark value. And really, you know, when you put darks right here against this and then the lights playing in, it's really going to show that curve and that dimension and the shine and the pop and all of that with this chrome as we build this up. So I'm not gonna cover it all up. Although, you know, I could take it, even if I do take it all the way to the edge, let's say I do, it's all good because I'm still gonna add black, a little black line right here. So it really doesn't matter actually. Uh, you can just go all the way up to the edge. It's all good. So let's see, I'm just gonna block this in right now with this gray value. Okay, just like that. I'm gonna get some more water in this paint. Have it flow a little bit better, or keep it flowing, I should say. See, like that. Okay, just gonna block that right there and then I'm gonna leave a little gap right here to play some different values in there so that I can have some dimension showing and just how it's curving and everything else. Okay, and again up here, this is the general color. It's mostly gonna be this within this part of the chrome. something like that and I'll just kind of run this up and have it stop about I don't know maybe something like this okay and again I'll get that color right here I'll just block this in there like that Yeah, I'm just gonna say with acrylics, forget, forget, forget all about details and the exact color for now. Just get it blocked in. I'm telling you, take the general color, block it in, let it be. Let it be messy, let it be whatever it's gonna be in that first stage, because if you try to expect something too soon, it's just gonna frustrate you. I'm telling you, acrylics is not meant to look right the first time. And it's not meant to be anything that first coat, really. 
You have to put stuff down and then work with that on top of it in order for it to be what it's supposed to be. So a lot of acrylics and getting that frustration out of the way and into that enjoyment of it is really just understanding the way that it works. If you understand how something works, you won't be frustrated. It is a major difference on that. And I can't tell you how many times in the past when I first started painting with acrylics, I got frustrated and, and you should have seen me in college. I took an acrylic painting class in college, but mind you, it wasn't like I was taught how to paint. It was really about, you know, the academics of it as far as the history of it. I mean, heck, they even taught us the anatomy. We, we spent a week studying the anatomy and the vocabulary of what the different parts of the eye were called. And then I started thinking, is this a biology class or like an anatomy class? I thought I was taking an art class. <laughs> and the reason that they did that was to teach us how colors are affected by certain aspects of the eye mechanically. And it was like more than I cared to learn. That's not why I took the class. And then, of course, we learned the history of painting like Monet and Van Gogh and all these different people and how all that started and you know it was interesting but again that's not why I took the class initially I thought it would be fun because I would learn you know how to paint and be an artist and it was hardly anything like that and it wasn't until I started going to YouTube and looking at other painting lessons and reading some books and just kind of self-educating myself and then applying what I've learned that I really started to take off and enjoy this craft. And what's funny is I hated acrylic painting, you know, when I was in college because of all the academics involved and the fact that I was used to oil paints with Bob Ross and because Bob Ross does such an easy layout and the way his mediums are specifically made for his style of painting, it was true, anybody could do it no matter who you were, it was super simple in that regard. And it really, for me, it made acrylic painting look really hard. And it was very frustrating trying to blend the colors and all this rough first coat. I didn't understand how it worked really. I expected it to work out like oils and be something that I could just do with ease. And when it didn't go that way at all, I made sure, <laughs> I made sure that my teacher or my professor knew that I hated this class I made sure that he knew that and that I despised it and I couldn't wait to get out of it. And in fact, I even tried to drop the class, you know, more than halfway through and it was too late. And I thought, well, that's going to look bad on my transcripts if I try to drop this thing now, especially an elective and I fail it. So I stuck it out. And it wasn't until the last week of class that I went to YouTube to try to figure out how to do a painting that involved showing different aspects of what we had learned and all the vocabulary that explains what things are called and you know I was supposed to present this thing as a final and lo and behold I did a final on this thing and I had different things in there I think I had a wine glass in there a wine bottle I had a regular glass of water I had an apple involved and it was kind of like this still life kind of collaboration that I did and I was blown away because I followed some tutorials on some things and I learned some techniques and boy, did they work. I mean, it was like mind blowing. And I said, oh my God, this was kind of cool. Maybe I can paint more than just landscapes or I can paint landscapes in a different way than just the regular Bob Ross layout, which don't get me wrong, Bob Ross is awesome. His paintings are amazing. But it got to a point where it's like I saw a new avenue and it excited me and so I started doing more of them and I got better and next thing you know the very thing that I used to hate I absolutely love now with all my heart I mean I didn't want anything to do with this and I tried not to have anything to do with this and now it's everything that I love and that I want everything to do with it's amazing how that story went but that's my story on how I got started with acrylic paints and I thought it was my turn now to pass the torch and see if I can maybe unlock other artists that maybe don't know that they're artists. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue blocking in. I said blocking can take a moment, but I'll tell you, once you get everything blocked in and some layers built up on that, 
and then you start changing values and adjusting colors, that's when it starts to really get really, really fun because now you're like onto something. Now you have something to work with. The playing field's established and it's really, it gets really fun that way. So let me put this down right here. Okay, and also right here. Okay. And let's see. I'm going to maybe add a little bit of that in here. Alrighty. And I'm going to put this, lock that in as well, this little shape here within the, the uh, grill here. Okay, and what I'm going to do is establish the headlamp here. So I'm thinking something about like this. Okay, fill in this part up here. And then down here as well. Oh, something like this. Okay, and I'm also going to put that in the chrome areas of this rim here. So it's a little bit lighter, as you can see, than the tire part that I established. Again, I don't want to lose where things are, like where's the tire, where's the chrome? <laughs> You know, where's the shadow, where's the tire, see, so all these values, this blocking stage, it's all about, like I said, getting everything laid out where it goes, and then I can start adjusting colors on top of that, because once you do that, then you don't lose anything, and now you can start building up all your details and layers within the parameters that things go without losing things, you know, within the same values of each other. And you're like, hey man, what's where'd the tire go? Looks like it disappeared, or where's you know what's going on here? See that'll kind of without the value changes and without the blocking and the layout first, that'll kind of bring mystery to your painting instead of clarity and uh, you know a sure wow to the eye like right away, like dude, that's awesome. Instead of huh, yeah, but wait, what's going on right here? What is this supposed to be? And that can be a little frustrating. I don't know. When I look at something, when I paint, I like to have clarity and I like to know what it is that I just did instead of trying to figure it out. Because if I'm trying to figure it out, I'm thinking everybody else is probably going to sit there and try to do the same thing and they're really going to try to figure it out since they didn't paint it and they're not sure what to make of it. So all of these steps involved this blocking will prevent all of that from happening and you can guarantee that after you do a few paintings you get more confident at that you're like you know what I know it doesn't look like it should but I know it will I have faith I've been around this block before and faith is really just remembering last time and knowing that it worked out then and it'll work out now not forgetting what's been done before and holding on to that. That's how you persevere with faith, by the way. A little inside, a little inside, a uh, little thing there for everybody. <laughs> all right, so I'm gonna block this in around all these dark values that I put down for now. Okay, so. I find that with the way that acrylics work, when you have that understanding and 
you know how it works after you've done it a few times it really adds to the joy of their painting instead of being frustrated and worried and wondering and you're really able to rest more with ex the more experience you have with it in that way it's just seeing over and over again how it works and how it'll work again this time and you know it is what it is it's not going to just change and be something different next time all of a sudden it is what it is every time the way that it works is the way that it works so now let's get i'm going to get some black I'm gonna go into the grill area now, and I'm gonna fill this, um, let's see. I'm going to, I'm gonna come up here, and I think I'm gonna leave this part open, right in here, because there's gonna be some red that's reflecting into the chrome off of the truck here and that's going to bring more shine and all of that to this so I won't cover that up down there but I just want to block in from here on up see so again giving myself freedom to just choose kind of what I want to do and where I want these reflections to be without being exact and as long as I again as long as I'm within my parameters it's all good I can do anything I want within those parameters light play is very random so that's why I like to do that it just allows me to do what I want to do with that and I just feel better about it at the end because it's just it adds originality to something that I was looking at and it's not exact you know it's my painting not a copy of a photograph <laughs> if that makes sense so you know, whenever I do a painting too, custom wise, it's never the same exact every time, even if I do the same picture. So that also brings some uniqueness to it. And anytime I've ever sold a painting, I know that I'm selling something that is not sold in any store. And it is original in a lot of ways. So that said, yeah, I have to leave it open. Okay, something like that. So getting everything established, we can see just how great that's going now and super cool in that way. So let's see, what I'm gonna do now is take a little bit of this. have that black okay I want to come in here and sort of thicken this black up in here along this headlamp and then right in here along this this area here just kind of want to streak that down a little bit like that see that kind of just starts to build a little dimension we're gonna start getting into some of that here in just a moment but again gotta put down more than one coat before I start doing that okay so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna mix up another value here I've got this phthalo blue and I've got some raw umber. I'm gonna mix that just a little bit into that and now titanium white. Let's get more raw umber into that. So let's see. I want this very dull, kind of Payne's gray sort of look to it. Um, 
I want it more blue though, kind of. Okay, a little bit more white into that maybe. Okay, kind of something like this. Okay, it's kind of this grayish blue color when you add those raw umber and blue and some white like that. And I'm gonna come in here now and lock in this general value. And again, this is my number four flat brush that I'm using. It's a new brush. Okay, so I'm going to take my number four flat brush now and I'm going to go in here with some different values just to block in again with that. I'm going to take some raw umber, some titanium white, kind of something like, uh, something like this. And I'm going to come in here now and Let's block in right here. Okay, so just like that, I'm just gonna block that in. And let's see, I'm gonna block in this right here with that. Get a little bit more water on that paint. Okay, and watch the difference here. Booyah, see, that just flows really nice when you add some water. Okay, but not too much water. Again, it'll thin it out. You can see it's kind of thinned out a little bit there, but not too bad. And I can just really get in here and fill this in really well and get these nice crisp lines with enough water. And totally what I want to do there. Okay, so back to that blue, kind of Payne's gray blue that I made. So I'm going to get some phthalo blue now and raw umber together. Again, some titanium white. And I'm going to go in here. Fill that in. So now I think I'll go over here as well with some of that and bring this in, bring me down just a little bit. Okay, and I don't need to clean when I'm going to black really because, you know, black can pretty much cover up anything. And I'm going to take now some of that. So again, just loading up my number four flat brush here with that permanent black and I'm going to come in here around some of this. Okay. Again, using the edge of the brush when I need to or the corner to get into small areas. And just not pressing very hard because if I press too hard, of course, I'll get a fatter line. And that'll render, you know, a thicker line maybe where I don't want it so thick. And again, between these and up in here a little bit. Okay, so something like that. Let's get in here with that. Okay, 
Okay, so something like that. And I'm thinking maybe right here there's a bit of an indication maybe of a of a steering wheel. See, I'm turning it over because the other side kind of ran out of paint, so. I can get that color laid down that way. Uh, maybe a little steering wheel, like I said, indication there. And I'll come in there and mess with that some more. So now I'm going to take some white, maybe a little phthalo blue to that. Not much. I want it mostly white. Just a hint of some of that sort of bluish gray. So without cleaning, I'm not really worried about it. I'm just going to take something more like this okay and with that I'm gonna go with a lighter value right here Okay, something like that maybe. Okay, and I'll come in here with that same value. And I'll adjust this, of course. I'll make this what it's supposed to be, but just blocking for now, like I said. Okay, I'm gonna get that there. And, and just something like that. Alrighty, I'm gonna clean that brush now. And again, rinsing it after I clean it so I don't contaminate my colors. Okay, I'm going to pick up now my number six flat brush, a little bit bigger, and again, I want to come back in here and I want to do another base coat layer to get all of this uneven, you know, areas filled in and get this more solid and fuller. So again, I'm going to take that same crimson red here and I'm going to scoop up some paint. See, I don't care. I'm just, I want to, I want some paint. I want to be able to lay this down. And cover some stuff so I'm gonna do this and one more time let's get another coat and block this in again see and I can brush on top of anything that's kind of build up in extra and just kind of thin that out or spread that out evenly and again I'm gonna go around this guy and just using the edge again in the corner of the brush Okay, something like that. Okay, getting some of that excess paint out because I don't want to load it too fat when I'm in these smaller areas, of course, because that'll just kind of get a big spill out and definitely don't want to do that. So I'm just kind of, you know, load it normal in these areas and these smaller areas up here.
Okay, a little more paint up. And continuing on here. Well, it could take some time, you know, a little bit to get these colors down before we start getting into details and value changes and all this. Could be a bit, you know, depending on how big your canvas is and, you know, just how many coats you might need to put down before it starts to solidify and, you know, we start getting all these things filled in like this. So, all good, as long as you're enjoying the journey. It's important to enjoy the journey of what you're doing. Especially if it's not something that you have to do and it's your leisure time and it's a hobby and all that. It should be enjoyable for sure. Okay, see, not really worried about covering that up too much because you can still see that line just fine. That's all I'm worried about. Well, I won't say worried. I don't like that word. Um... Only thing I really care about, I should say, <laughs> just getting that line so I can still see it. That's all that really matters. I don't care how neat it is right now, as far as keeping that line perfect, as long as I know where it's at. And it's all good. Okay, just getting the edge again with that brush, keeping everything intact and all that as I get the second layer down. So as you can see, I mean, it is getting better as far as covering up all these different, you know, breaks and everything else. But it may yet need a third coat before I go on to adjustments and details and all that build up on this. So all good, you know. The more layers you put down with acrylics, the better it gets, the more full, the more saturated, and all of that. So whatever you need to do, you know, put as many as you need to put down. Definitely more than one, that's for sure. <laughs> that's just the nature of this particular pigment and how this craft goes. That's how it works. So right here. And again, not worried about this cover up a little bit. I can still see that line just fine. Just want to make sure I can still see it. So when I do come in here with details and different values of paint, I know where to put them. And it'll all come together super well. Okay, now, I'm thinking something like that. Okay, so 
I'm gonna clean my brush again. And that's what I wanna do now. After this set guy off. Let me get that established and all good again. It's like I never used it. All right, I think now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start filling in the headlamp and a little bit of this chrome area here. Start working on some of that while this dries a bit. And just kind of getting that line off of there. There's a little thick kind of buildup. I had to smooth that off. Okay, so, and let's see, number four flat brush. That's what I'm going to now. I'm gonna go titanium white. Just a teeny, teeny touch of black. I mean, hardly any at all. I'm thinking something maybe like this. See how light that is? It's just kind of an off-white. And I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna build up some of these chrome areas here. So I'm gonna fill that in, this area in right here. It's a little chrome plate with the name of this vehicle on it. And I'll get that on there after a bit here, but I just want to block that in there. Maybe something like that. And I want to come in here. And put this chrome. Start popping this chrome a little bit here. Maybe something maybe like that. Okay, right in here. Okay, something like that maybe. Okay, see, I'm always adjusting color. I can cover up over this. This is a little bit lighter than what I put. But it's all good. Something like that. And something of this sort here. Okay, so we start adding these little things. You know, just however, random little shapes again. If you don't like a shape or something, take that gray cover over anything and use it to define anything as far as shapes go. Anything you want to do and vice versa. Just really play this in here and don't even worry about how neat that is because it's all good. Okay, so. Now what I want to do is I want to take some, let's see, I'm going to take a smaller brush. So I'm going to clean this number four off. And again, every time I do, I do that, it's back to its new state again as if it never got used. And I'm going to go to my number two flat brush now that I haven't used yet. I'm going to get into some smaller areas now. I'm going to get the brush wet though. And I'm going to do this to it first and get that excess water off. Okay, so it's kind of damp, so I have something to work with. And I'm going to start building some chrome in here. And I just want to take titanium white. Just a little bit. And let's see, I'm going to start going something like this. And I don't want to cover all this gray up, so I just kind of want to streak something maybe like that. And then maybe something down like this. So the motto goes here and there, but not everywhere. Meaning I want to put this color here and there, but not everywhere as far as covering all the values up. I want to let all these other values play along with this white 
because with those contrast colors involved, the shadows, the darks, the lights, the grays, the blacks, and then this white, it's really going to contrast against one another and give that impression of really shiny chrome that's just like, bam, just popping out. And you really need all these other colors to compare and contrast with because it's obviously the same color anywhere it's just going to be just that and it's not going to show any kind of pop or anything that's the whole reason something pops is to is when you have those comparisons and other values playing together like that that makes it do that so definitely here and there but not everywhere is definitely a motto that i would say you want to live by when you're doing this or when you're doing any painting at all actually that's what really brings it to life. So let's start to bring this to life. And as you can see, it's not really, you know, the white's not all that opaque. You can see through it and it looks more kind of grayish and it's not really popping yet. But again, with acrylics, as you know, the more you build up these things and you continue to do it, it just, they build on top of one another and it becomes more opaque and it becomes fuller and more saturated. And it really starts to bring out the definition of the contrast effect about of, of how strong that is when you build up layers that's so important i can't say that enough build up layers in the acrylic world or you won't get a very effective contrast with colors you have to keep putting them down and building them up and adding more layers and you know that's just the nature of acrylics that's why i say once you once you do this enough and you you realize how it works that way it doesn't really there's really nothing that's upsetting about it. You're like, oh man, it's not looking right. It's it's too faded or it's not really contrasting that well. And you can, it's, it's too subtle, you know, it's not. See, look, I'm going on top of this now and you can see that showing up more. See, this is what I mean. Just things like this are really going to start to build up as we put more layers down. It just will get better on its own as you do this. So... Keep on keeping on. It's just the way it is. And it's all good. I'm satisfied with this. And I hope that you are as well. Like I said, this should be fun, not frustrating or aggravating. And, you know, lack of understanding on how this craft works or this medium works, I believe is the very culprit as to those that get frustrated and those that don't it's just realizing you know what it's not done yet it's not supposed to be done i just need to keep going and it will turn out i promise trust the process don't give up and you will be amazed It's funny, I've done so many pieces where it's like, I wonder sometimes in the past, God, is this ever going to turn out? And I've been so close to quitting a handful of paintings in the past before. And I'll tell you, I just, I hung in there. And next thing I know, it was like magic. I'm serious. It just like out of nowhere started to do its thing. And I just stood back and I just went, wow, when did that happen? How did that just become alive all of a sudden? That is cool. So to me, that's one of the most things I love about this painting is that with acrylics, it just, it's like a magic that just happens out of nowhere. It's like a miracle, the resurrection of the dead, <laughs> if you want to put it that way. It's like, it's alive. It's talking to me now, man. It's about to do its own thing. It has a mind of its own. How'd that happen? It was this dead, dead beat, you know, whatever. And now it's like, wow. So, and I promise you, if you just hang in and keep on applying layers and keep on practicing and doing this, it's just going to turn out. I'm telling you, that's just the way it is. It will. Hang in there. Do not give up. I don't care how messy or how unappealing or how weak the contrast may be. There may not even be one happening yet. I don't know, but it just will happen. You just got to keep going. All good. So 
if you see here, I'm just dancing this white in, you know, and like I said, the contrast isn't very strong yet because, again, I got to build up more of these on top of one another and, again, add in darker values of black in between some of this. So I'm really not done adding the values, too. That's another thing about contrast is a lot of times you just have to not only get more layers, but you have to add more, you know, darks and shadows around the lights and really... You know, as you go back and forth, it just, like I said, it makes the contrast stronger each time. And it really just comes to life out of nowhere eventually. And so I'm just playing this around till I like it. And, you know, you can put these however. These are just, you know, lights playing off of this chrome. There's no right or wrong. I mean, light is constantly changing, as you know. It never sits still. So, you know, really just go for it and just have some fun freestyle this thing it's anything you want to do at any time see so I'm just tapping maybe sometimes you know adding a little this and that I don't know whatever okay so in here on this grill I'm gonna load up the paint one more time again and I want to streak this like part that kind of protrudes out it's part of the metal details of this uh, fender this grill area here and again if I go out of bounds or my lines not sitting right I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna I'm gonna stand it well I'm gonna go like this because the again the ergonomics thing so I'm gonna follow this without laying any paint down just to keep my plane where I want this and about right here see that just like that See if I can get that dark and define this if it spills out or if it's not lined up with this. You know, it's all good. Whatever, however, no big deal. And I want to go in here now and fill this part of the headlight in just to block this in. See, just like this. And I'll build that up. Okay, just kind of play this in. Um, this is going to be red in there, like I said. So, you know, something like that. I don't know. Let's see. I want to connect right here, this part, because this, this whole thing right here is all part of that chrome area. And it may not be defined yet, but again, not worried about that. Okay, let's fill this in. And maybe right here. See that? Okay, I'm going more white now. Same thing. I'm gonna add some more of this highlight in. There's a very strong striking highlight right here, it looks like. So a lot of times what you'll find is when you do your lights first, you'll be like, ah, oh, it doesn't look very shiny. And then you start adding black or dark values around the light areas. And that's when it really starts to get brighter because again of that contrast. And then it starts to really look like it's shining. So yeah, just building it up. And we are having fun, having fun. Okay, so I'm gonna go in here now and I'm gonna strike some tire highlight. And I wanna sort of do this. It's kind of a dry brush because it's easier to like kind of fit and blend this in, you know, with a dry brush. Sometimes that helps. And so I didn't put any water on this, of course. Okay, so there's a highlight going around the tire like that. Kind of striking it a bit. And 
down this way as well. Okay. Now I'm going to clean this brush and I'm going to take some black now. this I'm going to go in right here see now I can adjust my colors and now I can start to make sense of what's going on whether you know I don't want this to look like part of the chrome because it's the same color as that but when I put this black in here and I start to really define the tire we're gonna see eventually the difference here between the tire the highlight of the tire and then the chrome metal that's shining so that it doesn't look confusing and it doesn't get lost you know in this kind of a way so i'm gonna go around this now in this inner part see and i can separate the chrome from the tire and then of course from the highlight uh the highlight on the tire so just like this Using my number two flat on the edge of it, and I can get in here pretty precisely and really clean up this tire a bit and show what's going on. Just like that. And I want to leave some of this highlight here. I don't want to cover all that up, so I'm going to go again in between the chrome and the tire highlight with this black. See, just like that. And I'll load my brush again. See, so what happens when you're brushing is you notice those bristles are kind of all frayed out. And it's all good because you can just go back in, load some more paint, and just kind of wiggle it, pull it through, and look, you're back in business again. You got a nice point or a nice tip, a nice edge again. <laughs> well, whatever it is, call it what you want. You know what I'm saying? It's making the brush nice again so you can work with it without it getting all crazy on you and going out of bounds and you know getting all jacked up like that so okay um so right here i'm gonna have some of this tire disappear into this shadow here so And look, I'm going to use very, very light pressure and sort of blend this dark into the tire a bit. And see that really shows shadow play hitting the tire a bit when I do that. It's going to really show kind of the difference on, you know, that versus... Just having a gray tire. Is we don't want a gray tire we want a black tire with some highlights that tell us what's going on see so this is good practice on getting something that's dark in a shadow area at the same time while not confusing what's going on so that you can see the difference of the shadow and the tire and be able to tell that right away so that your eye doesn't get confused or try to wonder what's going on or where'd the tire go or how come part of it looks like it's missing or, you know, stuff like that. So let's see, I'm gonna get this tire now down a little bit more, fill in this, this little white gap here that I didn't fill, some canvas showing there. So just like that, and we pretty much got. See, I'm gonna go into some more paint again and load it up. Get that edge reestablished, and let's fill in. So see, it's kind of taking shape a little bit. We're kind of seeing 
you know how it's going with that and what I'd like to do is sort of blend this up into here a bit see I'm just kind of tapping just a teeny bit of pressure on my brush and I can sort of fade this up into that highlight a little bit and in doing so it kind of settles that highlight down so it's not just one hard line but it actually looks like it's shadow play happening and a highlight on the tire in that way seeing that softens those edges up making it more natural and realistic looking see so maybe just a teeny bit over this I don't want to cover up all of that gray of course I just kind of want to settle that down a bit see kind of something like that that really smooths this out and gives it more of that natural look to it that realistic look and now we're starting to look more like a tire that is in a shadow area without the confusion I'm gonna do now is I want to I want to go in between some of this highlight here and I want to hash in some dark uh, some black and that's gonna show some tread on the tires so let's go like kind of like this and See something like that. These little details, see these little values playing together. You got darks, you got some lights. And see, I can even take this down, darken this area as well. See, kind of like that. I'm just kind of taking my lines around like this, getting that perspective going. Okay, something like that, see? This is cool, see? So I can work on different parts of the painting here while I let this other stuff dry and really just keep moving on this. Really cool like that. So I'm gonna come in here now. Now watch this, I'm gonna take this black and here's where I'm gonna start to contrast things and make them come alive now on this tire. So, so you got stuff like this and this is gonna really start to build up the shine and the chrome and all that and the pop. See, I can go in here using the very, very edge and even the corner of this number two flat brush to get some of these details involved. See, and I'll just play this here and there, but not everywhere and let these other values play along still. And it's awesome how all these things, how they play together and just how you can create something super cool like this when all of these things are involved to make this happen so see that like that see and it's even adding body and texture to it at the same time and maybe like yeah right in here see so just kind of play these wherever 
as long as it's involved. It doesn't have to be exactly like mine. It doesn't have to be exactly like anything. It just, as long as it's in there and playing along like this, it's just going to do what it does. And it's like picture filters at this point. If you want to change, you know, the shape or however, it's really just light and shadow play. And like I said, that's always changing in real life. So there's really no right or wrong. The only thing I'll say generally is, of course, you want to follow the shape of something to show that something is reflecting something. If you don't follow the shape of something, you kind of lose that. And then it's kind of like what's going on. So there's general rules like that that are basic and common to all things you know, that you want to hold to. So let's go right here with some of that dark and see if I use just a little bit of pressure too with that black, it just barely puts some of it down and in a way kind of changes the value of it because now it's more gray looking as opposed to more pressure and more paint that I put here where it's black. So again, different values. There's this gray, there's this gray. And then there's black and then there's, you know, these lighter values. And then of course, as this dries and I put more white, just pure white in some places, that's going to even change this up more and have even more values playing. And again, the more layers and the more values you can have playing together, the more pop and the more realism you're going to get out of this. That's why I say you just got to keep going and build it up and build it up. And most of all, enjoy the journey. If you're not enjoying the journey, even if the destination and the result is cool, you're going to burn out on this on anything you do eventually because you're going to get tired of doing it. And not enjoying the journey on something will outweigh the enjoyment of the result of it. That's especially true in the fitness world in case, you know, that's something I would like to say too because I know a lot of time people, they go for these shortcuts in the fitness world and yeah, they're very effective, but... It's not realistic to continue with the same thing or that same pill because eventually you just get bored and life is always changing and moving and it's important to have variety so you don't burn out and get bored and all that. And then of course you learn more that way and you always get fresh results in everything you do and so it stays exciting and you get new goals to accomplish and it just adds all that meaning and purpose in everything that you do in that way. So with that said, I. I think that variety is the spice of life. It really is. Without it, it's just boring. It's like a boring pot of soup with no flavor. Just real bland. It's like, yeah, I'm eating it because it's got good ingredients in it, but it's kind of just doesn't taste that good. It's not very exciting. <laughs> life should be fun. And it doesn't mean that everything that we do should feel good and be fun all the time because a lot of times getting somewhere can be a battle and but it, you know in a fight but it you know it could be worth it too depending on what it is and maybe it's something that you have to do in life sometimes but again we're painting we're doing something fun and leisure and it should be totally totally fun so as you can see these blacks now involved and we're, we're starting to see something here it's really happening just all these irregular little shapes really shows this very shiny, you know, chrome effect. Really cool. Gives it some body and texture. Just like that. You just kind of strike it. Boom. Just go for it. If you don't like something, take a value, cover it up, define it if it's too much, but you want some of it to remain. It's all good. Okay, just like that. And now I'm gonna do the same thing over here. I'm gonna add some black. I'm gonna reload my brush again. And let's just go in here now and just kinda don't get this too messy maybe. I don't know, let's see. There's a hard black shape right there and okay very light pressure and again that can change the value still to more of a gray look 
So that's kind of neat when you run out of paint on the brush and you just have a very light coat of it. You can change the value of it that way too without necessarily having to add white to it or another color. So there's a little trick for us there. Save a little time on maybe having to mix colors all the time. Okay, so something like that. Something like that. And now, let's go into some more chrome areas. Let's go into, say, this bumper here. Let's put some of that down right here. And so see, what's cool too is see how there's a slight curve? That really shows the curvature and the three-dimensional look to these things as we apply these different values and, sh and, and, and put different shapes down, like I said, to follow and tell the eye what's going on. So it's not just this flat object looking, you get that 3D effect. So that's what's really cool with these other values and how you play them in here by making making the curves and the shapes follow, you know, these things. And that, that really brings out that 3D look by doing that. Okay, so right here also, there's gonna be some black. And let's see, I think I'll bring this over. Maybe kind of like this, yeah. See, I like that. That gives it something interesting there. Okay, let's smooth that out a little bit and define that a little bit better. Okay, and we'll see. Maybe right here. Okay, so all these cool things really starting to happen in here. Um, let's see, I'm going to hit up these right here. And see, just kind of wherever. I'm going to use this black highlight right here, or highlight. I'm going to use this black reflection to kind of bring these two, you know, there's like a separation here. And I'm going to use that to do that right there. Kind of bring those together a bit. I don't know. So again, curving right there. Mm -hmm. Just like that. Okay, not worried about how neat that is just yet. All right, so, so now, let's go into some more black here. And I'm gonna go on top of this. See, I can put a little of that right in here. I'm turning the paintbrush over, and that allows me to get more paint down on the other brush, side of the brush here that I loaded onto it. See, so as you can see, not using the whole brush at once, but using one corner or one side, and then flipping it over where the paint's fresh on the other side that I didn't put down on it yet, or where I didn't lay the paint down yet on that. And you don't have to load your brush as much. Plus, you can get more precision by not using the entire brush all at once. So there's that, see? And that just adds more dimension and depth right there. See, putting that black in there, that really separates and brings kind of a shadow where the car kind of somewhat, the body overlaps the headlight a little bit. So it looks like the headlights recessed into the body of the car instead of just all being surface everything, you know what I mean? And these little things, I'm saying, they just, they, they really build up the dimension and the 3D effect by doing things this way and adding these little things. So that's super cool there. 
Yeah, we can do that. And now, let's see, I'm going to add some dark right here because there's shadow. Which is right there. And then I'm just going to sort of stir this up and blend this out a little bit. See that? That shows a little shadow back there. Okay, and then right in here where I left this open, and I'm going to go in and add this shadow here. Seeing that builds up the body and the dimension and 3D effect as well with that. Okay. Okay, just little things. I'll come over this with some more red and kind of settle that down so it's not so wowed out, you know, and obvious. You want things in the realistic, uh, realistic world when painting to naturally, you know, transition and not be, you know, a lot of super hard, fast, you know what I mean? There is a place and time for that, and a lot of times with reflections, like on glass, you can have hard line reflections, and that really shows how shiny a piece of glass will be. And... That definitely works but you were always going to have a shadow and a light play where they fade into one another though too so it won't entirely be that way in any one picture okay so now what i want to do is i want to mess with some of this in here and again i'm going to stick to that number two flat brush and i'm going to take some white and just a touch of phthalo blue, some raw umber to it, just to dull that a bit. And I just want a little bit of, um, I'm sorry, a little bit of paint on my brush. See, I'm wiping a lot of it off. And the reason is, is because I just kind of want to glaze this over like this. And I kind of want to brighten this. And what I want to be able to do is kind of sort of fade that in to that darker Payne's gray value here. See, just very little paint, or and then, I'm sorry, very little pressure on my brush as I bring it in. And you can kind of get sort of this reflection or just kind of light play through there a little bit. Okay, same thing back here. You just kind of want to brighten that a bit. And then you can even use your finger and sort of touch that and sort of blend that down. Just a bit like so. Okay, so now without cleaning, I'm gonna take a little permanent black and a little titanium white. And I wanna come up here, sort of play this in. This is gonna be the rear view mirror or the side mirror, I should say. And let's put that value in here a little bit. See, so just just kind of adding some stuff here and there. Okay, so I'll add some of that right in here. Just kind of some stuff happening. I don't know. Just whatever, however. Okay. And Right in here, I want to add that red, like I said, with the reflections. So I'm going to take some of this crimson and a little touch of raw umber in there. I want to darken that down a little bit more than what I had up on the body of the car. Because it's reflecting into the chrome, so it's not going to be as bright as the car. Okay, right in here. See, a little bit darker. And again, my number two flat brush. I'm just going to block this in right here. Okay, something like that. 
and let's see. I am gonna start messing with this headlamp now. And so what I want to do is put the general value, excuse me, put the general value where that's going to be. So this mid-tone uh, mid gray, maybe a little darker. I'm going to put a little bit more black into there. Not much. Okay. And I'm going to do this right here. Just kind of dun, 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 dun. Okay. Kind of looks like it has an eyeball now. <laughs> and I'm kind of sort of hash this in. This is, by doing this, it's going to add a little texture. You know, show how when you look at a headlamp in a car, it's got that like crisscross, you know, pattern to it. So this will be the start of that. Just blocking that in in this type of way. So kind of like that. And I'll bring some of that down a little bit. Um, I'm just going to put just a teeny bit of pressure on the, on the brush. See, and again, it makes it a little lighter as opposed to this. See that? And Okay, so... Something like that. All good. And... I'm going to take now the corner of this brush and see these little lines I'm making here. I'm just going to kind of do something like that. I know it looks really messy and all that, but it doesn't matter because I'm going to let that dry for a minute. And then I'll come in there and I'll knock back what I don't like or, or you know, what doesn't belong. And I'm going to keep some of it. And in this regard, it's going to start to build the details and basically how the headlamp should be and how it would look in real life. So I'm going to take now this extra small number two flat. And again, sometimes it depends on the brand of paintbrush you use. Kind of like when you buy clothes and there's different medium sizes that are not always the same. Sometimes an extra large will be a large in another size clothing. And so I think it's the same with brushes because I'm finding out that this number two is not as big as you know, this number two, as you can see, they both have number two on them and they're not the same size at all. This looks more like a number four and this looks like more like a number two. But again, use the brush you're comfortable with. So if I could put this in layman's terms for all of us, I'm just going to say I'm going to use a smaller flat brush. How's that? And um, with this, I'm going to take just pure titanium white now. See, just a little bit of it. And I'm going to go back into this tire and really sparkle this up. So I'm going to go you know, start doing stuff like this. Get these really bright highlights in here. See, and I'll have all these other things laid out for me so that this white can now blast off of what's here if I don't cover it all up and it will totally do its thing and be super sweet looking and shine and all those things. See, I like that. Okay. Something like that. Okay. I'm still letting the body of the vehicle dry still before I go in there with other values and put another coat down thing about it is if you don't let this dry all the way and then you try to put another coat, even if it's the same coat of paint, you're going to find that you'll underbind the paint a little bit, which basically means you're going to be putting holes, you know, gaps rather in your paint and it won't cover over very well. And you really just have to let it dry a lot of times before you try to do anything else because it just won't let you fill it in anymore when it's still wet like that. So you know, learn to accept it as it is and understand how it works and roll with it. Don't fight it. Don't fight it. That's when you get upset. That's when things just really don't go well. Don't want to fight your work, but understand it and work with it instead. So let's see, we're going to go 
something of this sort here. See, just dabbing these little things in. And I'll tell you, it really takes off. See, and as we can see, it looks a lot better than when I first started. And obviously, the more coats that I'm going to lay down from here, and especially with value changes and all those playing together, man, this thing's going to start to really shine, really come to life. So, see, we take a mess and we make beauty out of it. Kind of like somebody who likes to do that in life if we let them. Alright, so let's see. Let's go like this and like that. And let's go I don't know, however. Again, if something's off, take a value and cover it up. You don't have to live with anything you don't want to. You're the creator in this world. It's all good. Nothing wrong with that. See, just like that. All right, let's go with, let's see, I wanna go right here. See, I wanna define the lens of that uh, more clearly here. Okay, and boom, see that? I can just put in these really cool little things like this. Let's see. And can make these little things happen. Okay, and then this is supposed to come down, I believe, like this. See little things like that, and it's starting to really look like it, it should look. Okay, look at how more defined that looks now. It's really starting to come to life. Okay, you can even put some of that white in here. See, and kind of do something like that, maybe. I don't know. However, so. As you can see, it's really, really starting to light up and we totally have something going on here for sure. All right, let's do this now. Let's go and let's get with that same smaller number two flat. Use what brush again you're comfortable with. This is your painting. I'm just showing you some techniques and just doing what works for me. Okay, getting a little light gray now, and I'm just gonna sort of play this in and kind of see what happens here. Let's get a little bit more black into that, maybe. Okay, and let's sort of fill some more of this in. some water on that paint it's just not flowing as well okay there we go now see I'm just dancing these values in it's all good see I'm just Kind of creating this just blend of colors in there just putting all these different things down different grays different you know adding some black 
you know, stuff like that. It's just really a combination of just so many things that really pops us out and shines it up. So I'm really just going for it, not worried about how neat. Because I can get those details going and when I do knock back all the mess, but keep some of that mess, of course, because it's part of playing along that makes us pop like it does. So let me go in here now. And I'll just kind of do something in here a little bit. Okay, something like that maybe. And now I want to get more white. See, and with that little bit of gray left on the brush, it really blended into that white or mixed in with it. Right on the canvas, I can mix my colors sometimes like that. And I can... Come in here and really turn it up. See, so, you know, I'll go over some of this too and just sort of blend this in. See, so, kind of something like that. See, so we're getting the shine going here. It's starting to build up. We're starting to see stuff happening and it's super awesome. Just really really taken off well and you can really adjust anything anytime okay and again cleaning that off and doing this again I just kind of wanted to get the paint off so it doesn't dry on there I'm still using it though so I'm gonna go into just pure titanium white okay and just uh, just load it up again just take a little bit boom boom so you get that nice tip or uh, edge on that flat brush there and I'm gonna go hit the highlight here of this side mirror seeing that says it's metal and that it's tells us where that's at okay and I'm gonna bring it down a little bit like this okay just kind of something like that and Here's what I want to do too. There's this little arm that's like right here. And it needs to come down. But I don't really want to put that on there just yet all the way because it's it's I still need to build this up and it's going to cover over the arm. That, so I'll do that after that as one of the final touches that I do. But yeah, um... Let's get some more white now. I'm going to take with that same number two, that smaller number two flat here. And again, I'm going to place these direct highlights here and there, but not everywhere and sparkle this guy up. Let's see, so. If you find that you're mixing your paint rather than laying colors on top of the paint, it just means you need to let it dry a little bit more. And one thing you can do if you don't want to wait or if you don't want to work on something else but you're really into where you're at, you can just take a hair dryer a couple minutes or so at the most and just give it a quick dry on medium heat. The hair dryer will just dry out acrylics in no time. I'm saying like within a couple, three minutes a lot of times. So... You know, it may not be totally, totally dry, but it'll be dry enough to where it won't keep mixing with values that you're trying to lay down so it won't keep blending together and just, you know, be to no avail. Sometimes, you know, that can happen when they're still wet as you try to get a contrast going and it's like staying the same. And that's really all that means. You just got to dry, dry out some of what's there already so that you can do that. Okay, so just adding some of that in back here. And all right, so I'm gonna go another coat of, it's pretty dry. I'm gonna go another coat of this crimson on top of what I've done. So this will be a third coat yet. And that's just fine. More coats, the more the merrier. And again, I'm going to go back to my number six and I'm going to take again, 
quite a bit of paint with this crimson color here and now it's going to really start to fill in all of the gaps pretty well. And I'll do this. Okay, just like that. See, uh, we're getting somewhere with that. It's starting to fill in nice. Starting to look better there. Okay, just like that. Okay, and I'm going to go over some of this black that I did a little bit, just to sort of settle that in more naturally like. And I'll even go over this black that I put down with that, with that same red, and that'll also help to bring that into its natural state. Okay, something like that. So, now it's looking better than it did. See, more layers equals more of a better result. Alrighty, so here's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to, right here where you see it's coming up right here, I'm going to actually take from here and come down and meet it down to where it starts to curve down because there's a bit of a highlight here on part of the hood. So I left that there because I didn't want any of this dark involved with it. So I left that for now until later. So I'm going to take a little bit of raw umber now to 
this crimson color here. And now I'm gonna take quite a bit of white to that. See, like this. I really want this nice light pink, kind of duller pink color here. And right here, I'm gonna take the corner of the brush and right where this curves up, I'm gonna continue that like this. See that like that and I'm gonna bring that up to this line right here sort of meet that up into the body of the car there and I don't want to blend this down into that because it's really um, it's kind of a hard line reflection so something like this where the light's hitting the body of the car. See, so it's something like that. Okay, something kind of like that. See that? That really gives some pop effect and it really takes some curvature into consideration and into effect like that. Okay, so here we go with that. And let's see. Here's what I want to do now. Uh, I want to continue down on this chrome. I want to continue to play and build this up. So I'm going to take my bigger number two flat. And I'm going to take just pure titanium white now with this. See, like that, and I'm going to start to play these around. Let's see what these colors do here as I contrast them now. This is what I love so much about this painting, or about acrylic painting, is you get to put all these colors down, and then you start to build it up. And this is where we really start to bring in all these different effects on top of all of this blocking that I've done and really start to see this come alive now because it's going to be like, all right, let's put this here. Let's put that here. And as I do that, it's like, this is one of those things where it just, the more you do to it now, it just gets better and better. Each stroke that you do, each thing that you put down, it's really starts to take off. And I love that. It's like, it's fun to play around. Okay, so let's put some of that here. See, and I'll make smaller ones like that. I'm just using the corner of the brush. See, and you can put these little things like this. And see, I'll load the brush again because the brushes, you know, the, the bristles kind of get frayed out a little bit as you're painting along. So you just reload it and get that edge established again. So let's see, going down. Let's do that. And I don't know, whatever you want to do. It's light playing, it's so many things happening. something like that maybe I don't know however whatever cover something if you don't like it it's all good let's put that there and let's I'm gonna go okay some of these things here let's see Just like this. 
we can really pop this up however see so like this here Okay. And all good, all good. Awesome. Okay. Now, let's see what I want to do up here. I'll strike something on here just a little bit. I don't know, see, like that maybe. And let's see, let's go. Okay, something like that. See all these little things happening. And we are totally getting this guy made. And getting that there. Okay, some light striking it like so. Yeah, so maybe like here with some more white and see so with this curve right here of this highlight that I'm doing, see how that defines the shape of this and it really brings out its dimension, its 3D look. It looks like it's curving like this instead of just being this flat shape like that. And that is what I'm talking about when I say values playing together and here and there, but not everywhere. And then using values to show the shape of something, using these highlights and all that to determine that. Super cool, man. Anything you want to do with this paint, this, this craft is so neat. Now, let's go back to the body. And what I want to do is I want to start to establish some areas that are really dark because that shows shadow and how we're playing that in. So I'm going to take some of this crimson again, some more of this raw umber to it. See that really darkens it down. And so that's a much darker value than what we had. And I want to go under this line that's going to be here, right here. I'm going to take that all the way underneath this here. Let's 
see, just like that. And I'm going to bring it all the way up to the headlamp, actually. And I'm going to start to really build this car up now. This is where it's going to really get awesome, where it's going to get fun. And on top of all this blocking, I'm going to start to put down all these different colors now and values and changes now within the body. And it's this is what's going to really show the 3D and the shine and the wowzer effect. We're going to start to bring that out now. But see, we can't blast off from nothing. That's why we have to put the base color down and it can't be the final color because you really need this underneath stuff in order to blast something off from there. It's just like our launch pad, this blocking stage to getting something to really pop and bring in the color that is the final color on top of everything that we've done. So all this underneath stuff is a must. It's like trying to launch a rocket with no launch pad. You know, you're not going to get out into space. You're not going to do it. It's not going to happen. So figuratively speaking, these blocking stages has built this launch pad and now we have a place to, to blast off from. And this is what it's all about in the acrylic world. Creating a launch pad and blasting off and saying, whoa, dude, that was super awesome. <laughs> so as you can see, you can tell and see how the body just comes alive just from that. It's really cool like that. So you can really, just with a little paint left on the brush, I'm just kind of bringing that down and really just bringing this going to start to bring this body to life. Okay, just like that. Oh yeah. Loving it. Okay, going back into some more of that color. And let's see, I'm going to take now and put that in here. Okay, see that, like that. It's starting to build body and texture that way. See that, that's, this is where, where it really gets good. It's kind of like construction, you know, there's the dirty part, there's being in the dirt, and then there's the, now we get to do the really clean finish work, the really cool, fun stuff. The part that everybody sees and appreciates where they say, man, that's such a good job, man. That's such craftsmanlike work. Look at those cabinets or look at how those pendant lights came out on that remodel kitchen or whatever. You know what I mean? This is the same way. It's the same kind of concept. It doesn't start off looking good and then it becomes beautiful. Yeah, bam. Okay, so let's get back here. There's some of that color. See, that looks like the, the bed of the truck now where it goes down into it a little bit. See that? See, so these values are now going to start to tell our story for us. And this is going to get super cool. Okay, let's go here. And... Give me a little bit of reflective shadow right in there and a little bit up in here maybe I don't know again if something's not right if there's a color off it's all good cover it up no big deal don't have to take and accept anything you don't want to Okay, I'm going to take now a little bit of this, back to this, uh, after cleaning the brush, I took, I'm going to take now some regular crimson again, and I'm going to go in here. I want to define 
something here. Uh, just more of the body of the truck. See that? I don't know. It'll show up better here in just a moment. Okay. Now, let's see. A little bit of this dark color again. Adding some more of that raw umber to it. And I'm going to go like this. See that line? I know where to put that value. I mean, that's very helpful. And that's why I like the drawing process first. So if you're not if you're not keen on drawing, I recommend, I highly recommend getting a hold of that traceable. Like I said, you can find that on Patreon. And it's definitely worth it. It will make all the difference on making your truck look like it should in the end and giving you that perspective on it and putting those values where they go. Definitely helpful in that. So that's why I give you guys that option and that choice there. And of course the proceeds go to continuing to make videos and as this builds up more, of course, getting better equipment and getting more angles involved and just the things that I need to do to invest into this to make this even better and get these videos to be the best that I can make them. And so I hope with what's happening now, I hope that you guys are able to follow along and that this is clear and you can see what's happening here. I do spend quite a bit of time editing these videos and it actually takes more time, a lot more time to edit these tutorials than it does to just do the painting. So definitely a lot of time goes into it and I do appreciate all of your support. Thank you guys so much. And again, I hope this finds you well and that you guys can follow along and really get a lot of satisfaction and inspiration and growth and anything that I can add to you to make you better at painting. Even as I learn, I'm still learning. I'm always learning, even as I teach what I've learned. And I really hope that you guys can learn well and, you know, and take these and really do many cool things with it. So I'm just gonna fill the rest of this line and I can still see that there, as you can see, I just kind of want to fill in the rest of that there and just kind of get the rest of this canvas covered up. Okay, just kind of something like this. All right, so continuing on. And we've got something going on. Now we're getting somewhere. I'm going to clean that brush off. And sure if I'm going to use this brush right now at the moment, but I'm going to do that to it. Okay, so I'm back. I did take a day off and had to do some stuff, but this is definitely dry, no doubt. And with that, I'm going to start now building all of these different values of red tones and highlights and shadows and really enhancing the body of this vehicle and bringing out all of its 3D dimension. And of course, all of its shine, and I'll work some more on the the fender here and get this shine and more defined and things that are more natural and settled down looking. So I'm going to continue to build this up a little bit and this is going to really start to shine and pop in so many ways. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead with some more stuff. So I reloaded my palette here. I have permanent black, some raw umber, some phthalo blue, some more of that crimson red. This is my vibrant uh, magenta red. The cad orange, cad yellow, and of course titanium white. And I'm going to come in here and start, like I said, building all these different things. So I'm going to change up some values and really start to make this guy come alive. So I'm going to take my number two, my bigger number two flat brush here, and I'm going to start up here. And I'm going to take just a little bit of crimson and a touch of raw umber to dull that down. So I know it looks weird with all these colors on my palette and yet it's just a red truck. 
and it's like, why do I need these other colors? Because that's going to change the values. I'm going to be using them to change values of my reds, more or less, to dull them or brighten them and have these different values playing together. So that's the reason I have all those values involved as well. So I'm going to take this dulled down red here, this maroon light color, and add some white to it to soften that and bring it up as a highlight. And I'm going to go up here and I'm going to apply this value as a shine. And I'll leave some of this up here open. So it's just kind of striking the edge right here. So again, using the edge of that flat brush, if you don't have a good edge, like I said, use an angle brush or something that does have a nice edge. Cause here you really want to get a little bit of precision involved and you don't want to be, you know, uh, going all over the place. So I'm going to say something like this. Okay, and then I'm just going to sort of lightly, just kind of like this, just barely touching the canvas, and I just kind of want to blend this out. Just kind of stir that up right in here. And I can even use my fingers and sort of do something like this. Okay, just kind of fade that out a little bit into here. Okay, and I'm going to take most of that color off my brush now can even use my finger to kind of get some of that off. And I just want to take now some titanium white. Just a little bit of that maroon color that I made. See, just a teeny, teeny bit, mostly white here with just a hint of that. And right here, I want to sort of enhance this highlight right here on the hood. And see, I don't want it completely white because, of course, it won't show up against this white here. So I did want a hint of that maroon in there. It'll look like the truck kind of disappeared there. Kind of like the old, kind of like a ghost truck but instead of a ghost ship, you know what I mean? From a long time ago, it could be a disappearing, reappearing truck. Nobody knows where it came from, maybe. <laughs> but in this case, I'm going to have it so you can still see it. Okay, so I'm going to come down here and just use the very corner of the brush as I get onto the hood here and sort of bring that highlight in. And see, it's just kind of hitting the top there. So something like this. And I'll just kind of dust this out a little bit so that this edge is sort of blended on top of this red here a little bit. See, and like I said, I can use my finger and sort of do something like this. And that kind of helps to blend it if you want to do that. Finger painting is definitely allowed with acrylics, so definitely feel free to do that if you want. It's actually pretty effective, believe it or not. And it's kind of like your fingers are acting like the brush at that point. And getting that blended out. So let's see. I'll say something like that. Okay, and let's see. I'll hit, looks like I'll hit a highlight here with that same value. So it kind of splits off, kind of does this, and then kind of does something like, something like that. Yeah, just something, you know, just kind of like so. Again, if you don't like something, take a value and cover it back or cover some of the line if it goes out too much and define it if you want. So it's all good. Don't hold back. It's not that critical. Where it's more critical is like out here. Like I don't want to go with darker colors, like I said earlier, into my lights and then have to spend a while taking lights to cover up darker values. That takes a bit of time to get that to go away and cover over. So... It can be done, just a little time consuming and a little bit of a detour maybe in some ways if that does happen. But definitely not the end of the world. So never panic. There's really no reason to ever panic with this craft. It's very forgiving and I just love it. 
love it so much. So let's see now, I'm going to take now a little bit more raw umber and let's put that into that value and I want to add more white now to that. And this is kind of a very dull, kind of in the shadows, but there's reflective light shining within it. So I know this is kind of a sort of a grayed sort of maroon. That's light in value. And I want to take this now, kind of something like maybe from here. And I'll just kind of do something like Kind of like this and kind of shape that however I'm just kind of generally getting it how it should be and I like to be able to have some free range on these and be able to make my own shapes and decide where I want shadows and lights to play in certain areas because like I said it's always changing and the biggest thing is make sure that your shadows and lights when they're hitting this you know an object that it follows the curvature and the shape of it so that it keeps its shape intact and also you can use that to define the shape and show maybe how curved or how steep something is or not so good stuff to keep in mind with that okay so I'm just gonna take this up just kind of do this and it looks like come down like something like this okay so something I don't know kind of like that Again, if I don't like a color, I can always adjust it by adding other values in here to change it. And again, if I don't like how far I take a value, I can take another dark red value or whatever and cover it up. And I'll just define anything I want anytime with color or shape. So I'm just going to go for it and just kind of freehand this shape in here. I feel like with acrylics too, you really can practice drawing too in this kind of a way, you know, because you can, being that you can cover anything and all of that very forgivingly it's really allows to practice and never have anything that's a mistake or anything that's permanent or anything that you have to commit to or live with so take advantage of that and really see how creative you want to get and you may end up you may find that sometimes when you paint a picture that you're looking at or whatever that it will Maybe you like yours better than the picture. I've actually done that a few times where I thought, you know what, I like the way my shadows and light highlights look as opposed to the picture that I was looking at. It just seems brighter or more vibrant or whatever. But that's not all the time. Sometimes. Okay, so maybe something like that. And what I actually want to do now is take a little bit more red into that, but I also want to take some more white. So maybe something like this on top of this a little bit. And yeah, something like that maybe. Okay, just building stuff up. Something like so. All right, and I think with that same value, I'm going to hit back here and also up here. So I'll start up here. See, just kind of something like this. And I'll add this value in here, like that. OK, 
Okay, maybe something like that. And then I'll leave this dark gap here and apply this value in here. So this is why I like the blocking stages again, because it just, when you have that general color where it goes, for the most part, you'd come in back in here after that and you put these differing values on top of this, letting some of that show through. And that's really, man, I'll tell you, that's really where it comes to life. And it just takes off so well that way. You have all this underneath shown. It really just brings it together and makes like everything look like it was meant to be. So with that, let's see, I'll go right here. And then I'll have this come down, maybe looks like right here. See, and I'm just using the brush and just kind of smoothing out those rough edges as I go back and forth over them. And that really takes care of that really well. So something like that. Okay, and let's see. I'm going to have some of this striking kind of down here. Just get some of that established a little bit right there. I can make that more enhanced here in a bit. Okay. Oh yeah, something like that. And then I left this part open. And what I want to do, I want to take this along here, that same value. So I'll scoop up some more of this and come across. Okay, and let's see. I'm going to take more of this crimson now and some more of this raw umber into it. I want it a little darker. So I didn't clean my brush. It's all good, a little bit more raw umber. And I want to go in here now and get this darker maroon up in here. Okay, maybe something like that. I actually want it a little bit darker. So let's see, I'm going to go into some more of that raw umber and crimson and I'll go, yeah, something like that. That's more like it. It's in that area there. Okay, so it gives it lift, it gives it body. Super cool, I love it. It's going, going pretty well on that. Okay, so now, let's see. I'm going to work some more now on this chrome area here. I really want to get in here with some details and all of that. So I'm going to take my smaller number two flat brush now. And let's go with some permanent black and titanium white. And get this mid-tone gray going. Okay, something maybe like this. And I'm going to just start working some more of this in here. And let's see, let's just kind of go around some of these and settle them down a little bit. See, very light pressure with my brush, not a whole lot of paint either. It's always, you know, I'll tell you, it's easier to put more paint down than it is to try to deal with too much paint. If you put too much, you just kind of get a mess in one area that kind of, you know, it's too much for an area. And then kind of have to figure out how to spread that out. Then you want to let it dry for a little bit and then come back in and use less paint the next time. And 
just kind of, you know, I always say load less paint than you think you're going to need. Because nine times out of ten, that's actually how much you really need. And that seems kind of weird, but I'll tell you, this paint goes a long way. Just a little at a time is all it takes. Can always add more, but taking it off is not that fun. So let's get a little bit more black now. I want it a little darker, a little bit darker gray. I'm thinking something like that. Let's see what this looks like. Okay, that's cool. See, and I got these different tones of grays. I've got these little faded whites, and then when I come in there with the pure titanium white, that's more opaque and vibrant. It's really going to play together with all these things, looking like they're shiny and reflective, how things change within it like that. So totally what I'm looking to do here. And it just takes a minute, you know, sometimes to build these things up and get them to be what they should be. And like I said, the contrast with acrylic paintings in the first few layers is not going to be very strong. So definitely don't quit and say, oh man, it just didn't blend well or it just didn't come out that great because you can't really see much of a contrast or it doesn't look all that appealing or it just means it needs more time, more layers more values to play together and build up together. So that's just the way it is. It's just something that you gotta accept as this medium is the way that it works in that way. And let's see, I'll put that right here. And let's see, I'll get some of that yeah, maybe right here. these little things they seem kind of mundane you know these little scratches of color don't seem to matter too much but I'm telling you the more you do it just really uh, just really adds up and builds up really fast all these little things they just they do wonders believe it or not okay just a little bit in here I'm just using the edge of the brush. You can see I'm just kind of barely putting any paint down. I don't want to lay too much paint down because, as you can see, if you just put just a teeny bit of paint at a time with using very little pressure, it almost changes the value of my gray. Like I put down heavier pressure in here, but it's darker here than as opposed to here a little bit. So that's a, a good way to change your value without always running to your white or trying to mix new color. You can just put it down very lightly and it'll just kind of do it for you. If Bob Ross were around today, God bless his soul, I, he would probably say this is a lazy man's way of painting <laughs> in the acrylic world that is, you know. Uh, let's see, I'm going to go down here with some of that. Okay, and I'll leave some of this white open. Just putting these gray things down here and there and totally just having fun. Okay, and let's see. I got my dog on the porch rumbling around right outside playing a little bit. She's an English Bulldog with Catahoula and Golden Retriever mix. Super cool dog. I love my dog. <laughs> All right, so here's what's going on here. You can see this part of the bumper, this shiny part. This is where it actually ends, and this is the floor over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lighten. I'm going to go into some white. I have to like build the separation so that it looks like the bumper is not part of the floor back here. So I'm going to try to see if I can make a separation here. Uh, something. Let's see how that works here. Um, yeah, I'm going to come down with this lighter stuff. Let's see, I 
it's going to be kind of catching this here. So it looks like the part of the bumper where it should be and not getting lost in this floor in the background here. So see, just values. I can just change the values and make that separation and define this to be as it should. See, kind of like that maybe. And let's see, I want to get the top of it here and show a little bit there. So here we go. I'm going to take some more black. So I'm going to build some shadow here. Let's see if I can define this. So let's see, right in here. And I'll skip some of that and bring it down around kind of like that. And gap here that I didn't fill in with the canvas showing a little bit but I'll just get that right now okay something like that so it may seem kind of like a struggle on some of this stuff but again be patient hang in there it will totally work I promise things will be defined as they should in time you just got to keep plugging away. So see, that looks, I think we're starting to get a little somewhere now on that. Okay, maybe something like that. And let's see. I'm just going to kind of play this black in here in some areas. Let's see, maybe down in here. Like so, and then okay, and then right in here, there's some grill action going on. Let's see if I can get my angle on my wrist here. Maybe I don't know. If you totally need to turn your canvas, do not hurt your wrist. Definitely make make this work for you. So I actually am gonna do that. I'm going to actually go like this and do what I got to do. Yeah, it's all good. Yeah, just adding some grill stuff right here. And once I get the line established, I think from here I can just follow it and stay on it. So let's see. I'm going to come in here, just like I said, play this black around, kind of settle and smooth over some things, and I'll just lightly dust over some of this. So it kind of looks like shadows kind of hitting this a little bit, maybe within the grill, and it shows it kind of recessed in a little bit, maybe. Brings out a little bit of dimension in this way. Okay. All right, it's starting to look all right there. Okay, more permanent black on my brush. I'm just gonna load this smaller number two and I'm gonna have this distinct separation here. That's gonna really enhance and pop this out. And let's see, I'll go and leave some of that white showing. Even if I cover it up, it's all good. I can come back in and add it above it. Not a big deal. So as you get going on this, as you get your values in and as this builds up, you really can get away with some things. It's kind of like, think about distortion on guitar. You may not hit every chord exactly if you've ever played guitar or know about it, but when you have distortion, you can kind of cheat in a way. You can get away with not hitting every note exact because there's so much distortion going on that nobody's going to notice. And in the same way, you get all this stuff going on and all these different values coming at your eye at once. It's like one little thing that's off. You can get away with it. You really have to study a picture at that point to really see 
what's off, if there's anything off at all. And of course, if you're the artist, you might find that you notice those things right away just because you're the one that painted it and it might bother you. I don't know, but if it does, just like again, take values, adjust them, cover stuff and reshape and define things that get out of line or whatever it is that you need to do to you know, to get that satisfaction to your eye, maybe if you don't like something that you're looking at. Okay, so right on here on top, I'm going to get some of that dark value as well. And I'm just going to come down and just sort of do this. See, and that builds up some stuff. Just like that. Okay, and then around here a little bit. Not all of it at once. See, I'll skip some of that. I'll have this kind of curve around here, and then I won't get so thick out here like over here. I'll have it disappear more, and then I'll have it show up a little bit more, say, down in here. So a little bit more pressure with the brush as I use the edge of it. And it's just kind of like that. And you know, while I'm at it too, I'm looking at this back tire. I thought this might be too skinny back here. So I'm actually going to carefully, because this is a very light value that I'm putting black on. And I don't want to infringe upon that too much and have it go outside. So let's see if I can thicken the back of this tire up just a little bit more. And something like that okay just a little bit not much I'm gonna let that ride like that okay and also let's see Right under here, I'm going to start adding some shadow, maybe just a bit. And it's going to actually come down. A little bit more pressure right here where the shadow is the heaviest immediately under the bumper and then as it gets away from it out here it's going to so see I'm letting the paint run off the brush I put it where I wanted it heaviest first and then as paint runs off the brush I'm gonna just drag it out and have this natural fading shadow play as it would in real life happen here I'm just kind of do something like this And see, it just kind of runs it thinner, gives it that that nice shadow play, like I said. And I'm going to, this is actually some of the chrome that I'm going to use that same value for right in here. I don't know, so something like that. All good. Okay, so let's see. What I want to do is I want to take now some darker gray values in here as well as in here. So I'm going to take more black and more white into that. Or actually more, I'm sorry, more black into that white to get a darker gray. That's what I meant to say. And let's see, a little bit more black. Okay, so I want it a little darker now. And along these, you know, against some of this, well, let's see, a little bit more black. Let's see what I get now. There we go. It's a little bit darker gray now. 
and I'm going to dance this around. I don't want to cover up all this white. I just kind of want to go in between just some of it. And I'll have this lighter gray playing in there as well. So it's important to have, again, all these different values playing together. See something like that. And I'll hit that. Let's see. I'll go in here. Yeah, so really just have fun. Dance this around, push colors around, cover them up if you don't like them. And really allow these to play together. And it's really random in here. You know, you can put these and set these however. It doesn't have to be exactly like mine. In fact, it could even look better than mine. And sometimes, like I said, you look at a picture and you paint along and it's like, you know what, I like mine better because it just has more zing to it, the way that things are laid out and how they're playing. And... Of course, if you don't like it, you can always adjust it until you do get that zing that you like. So see, that's already starting to look better already, right? just adding these values in there really brings it to life that much more. So there we go. So this is why I always say acrylics is not really about drawing, it's about values of colors and playing them together because we've already got the drawing, but that didn't really take too long. It was really the painting and the value colors and the shifting of colors that we spend the most time at this craft. So it's really about putting the colors where they go and that telling the story to our eyes with all these things playing together, what's going on and how. Now, let's see, I'm gonna take now some more black. I've already got some white on there, so I'm not worried about getting more white because I wanna darken this gray again. And let's see, I'm gonna go Again, just here and there, but not everywhere. Okay, just kind of randomly just kind of placing this wherever. Just kind of mixing that up a little bit. Alrighty, so now... I want to come in here again and define just kind of this right here. Let's see, like so. Love these little birdies here in Hawaii, man. They they really they sing so well and wonderful. <laughs> I love it. It's singing away. Matter of fact, I'm going to be doing some painting videos here on some exotic birds pretty soon. So if you guys have a request or want to see really anything painted, then just drop a comment and let me know. I'd love to paint something for you guys or take you on a, a uh, tutorial if you'd like to follow along and really attempt something and see how that goes. I'll do my best at it and break it down as best as I can and and we can do it together and discover the colors and how we'll make that happen together. So yeah, that'll be fun. Let me know. So let's see, I'm gonna do some more of that and let's see, I'm going to something like this and I think I'll even I'll even do something like this maybe sounds like somebody's having fun on their dirt bike today definitely something I'd like to get down the road as a quad or a dirt bike and start taxing some of these trails around here where I live it's really fun looking all right so I think I want to come and bring this down a little further and then across so I think I'm gonna wipe a lot of that paint off the brush and I'm going to get now some white and I really want to again make this very obvious distinction and definition on where this chrome piece is at and kind of 
kind of do something like this. There we go. So I hope that kind of gets that there. So something like that. And then again, let's hit some more highlights with this while I have this value on my brush. And we can get this filled in a little bit better now on top of this other layer that I put down before, see? So again, building layers up and getting that contrast and those differences to really show up and become a lot stronger with these different layers. You must have more than one layer. You have to have a few if you want to get the contrast and the, the smooth, you know, texture or whatever it is that you're painting to really show up and be obvious instead of something very subtle that is kind of fading off and you're kind of like, ah, I can kind of see it, you know, where it looks kind of weak. So the strength of your painting is definitely in the number of layers that you put down for sure. That's why I say if you're not happy with your painting, it's just not done yet. You just need more layers, that's all. So I'm going to take more titanium white. I'm going to go right here. Make that pop and shine, see, just like that. And I'll come on here. See, there's a little highlight shine on the top of this guy. And you get these nice curves and three-dimensional thing going as well with these layers as you build them up and make, that, like I said, those contrasts and differences stronger and more obvious looking. It really makes everything else that much stronger and more obvious. Like I said, like the three-dimensional look gets stronger the realistic smooth texture of something gets stronger and more obvious and it really makes a very strong looking painting so I'll just take some time just build them up this is one advantage oils has over acrylics over acrylics is that it doesn't take many layers in the oil world as opposed to acrylics to really get your dimension and texture down it really shows up fast but the only thing is you have to live with everything you do so if a color's not right, well, it's that color now, <laughs> unless you want to wait a couple weeks and then try to come back over it, which, I don't know, maybe you don't mind and you have that much time and you don't, you know, you don't mind taking a month or so to finish a painting. Me, I like to do it and be able to change stuff right on the spot instead of having to wait a while, but that's just me. Everybody's different and they have their preferences and I believe that everybody should definitely do what they prefer because again this should be fun and you should do what you like to do not what you are told to do when you don't really want to do it because you're told that's how it must be or whatever you know so again enhancing these highlights here and making this stronger and more obvious looking of the headlamp here okay tapping in those whites streaking them in all of that good stuff and let's see I'm gonna come on here now and I'm gonna enhance this highlight there see just like that and I think there may even be a little bit of a striking highlight down here a little bit too like that see that just builds dimension like that super fast super easy okay there's also some other white highlights just go on top of this all good and I don't know just some irregular things just kind of dance that in a little bit and let's see there's going to be right here on the window something kind of a weird kind of a window reflection there so I went a little thinner there by not using as much pressure when I use the edge of the flat brush and obviously right here there was more involved there okay so just kind of something like that and for the purposes of this being a window even though it's looking through it 
I am going to add a little bit of white with some of that gray left on my brush. Not a whole lot, and that's a little bit too much. Let me get some more white on that. I can just mix that right on my canvas there with that. That's something like that. Okay. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, I don't know if that made much of a difference. I'll tell you what, actually, I'm gonna get a little teeny, I mean like a pin drop of phthalo blue. See, not much, just maybe a little bit more. And a pin drop of, let's see some raw umber. Let's we'll see if that can kind of make it more like I'm looking through a window. Okay, I think that might have changed it a little bit, made it more realistic looking. Maybe the window's not that clean and looking through it. It's not going to be that clear. So to make it more realistic, I think maybe a little something like that, perhaps. And I'm also going to take some of that lighter color here. And I'm just going to run this up just a little bit on top of this. See, it's a little transparent on top of this, so you can still see this value. It's a little different than that. And I'll just fade this up. Just kind of something like that. So these little things, you know, just playing them in here. I think I'll do that here as well. Uh, something like that, maybe. Shows a little light play in there, maybe, like that. Okay. And also... Some light hitting, maybe. I'm going to go just a little bit more titanium white. So that there's like this difference here of this little light shine strike here, I guess, you could say. Um, maybe something like that. Yeah, okay. And I'll just bring the same value down so it connects with this value here. Just how the light's playing off the window like this. And then on top of this black, check this out, I can go on top of it and you can still see this black through it, but it really makes it look like this light play is also hitting down there as well. So you can like see through it. So I don't want to cover it up per se, but I want to glaze on top of it. So I, I waited to do this part first before I went over here and used the rest of the paint on my brush so that I could show a glazing effect. So then I can even do something like that. So you kind of get this little light zing kind of thing going on. And then what I want to do is just take a little black, just a little bit and I just kind of want to go very lightly and I want to meet this up about right here. That way it looks like the light's kind of playing and contrasting against this darker part of the window. So you kind of like that. See all these little things. Just kind of build them up and have some fun. Do your thing. Okay, a little bit of black again on this number two, smaller number two. And let's see, I'm going to sort of run that underneath some of this highlight here. And something like that. Okay, so there it is, something like that.
Alrighty. Now what I want to do is I want to take just pure titanium white. I mean, as bright as I can get it. And I want to start placing that here and there and not covering up all this other white that's there. And it's really going to start to zing and shine even more. And it's really going to take off in that regard. So let's see, I am going to go ahead and just dry this brush off really well. Cause the thing about making something opaque and very bright, you kind of want your brush dry cause too, too wet and it'll just render a very thin watered down coat. And I really want to make this a very opaque, vibrant as I can get it, you know, strong, strong contrast. So having water is really not ideal in this case. So it's very dry brush and I'm taking just pure titanium white and see, I won't cover all that up and I'll just hit it here and there, but not everywhere. Everywhere will take away all the other values and then you lose the contrast and in turn you lose your depth and dimension and your 3D and just that pop and shine just gets lost. So spare some of that dark. That dark is your friend. You need that dark. So let's see, just a teeny bit right there. Okay, and... I can even use that to define some of the shadow if I want to. See that? And then I can come in here again. Just kind of do something like that. And then let's take some more white. And I really want to contrast up here again and define the very obvious part of this chrome part of the car here. So I'll leave some of this gray. I'll leave some of this gray in here, but I want to have most of this really lighten up and doing something like this. Okay. Yeah, I'm just tapping it. And the thing is, I want to leave that because if I, if I brush it out, it'll just kind of blend back in. And I don't want to blend it this time. I really want to have this obvious, very shiny, popping direct highlight, like the brightest parts of where the car is shining the most. And it gets easier to do that, as, of course, as you build up more layers. And as they're dry and you go on top of them, it's easier to to get those whites not to blend in as much. So definitely on top of dry layers is a must or it'll just blend into those other colors and just continue to be the same thing over and over. It won't will seem like you're not getting anywhere. So let's see, I go uh, something like that. And also in this tire area, let's let's pop that as well. I want to get again pure titanium white and really make this guy shine super bright. Really strike these rims with some of these direct highlights and all that good stuff. Let's see, let's hit that. Let's see, not everywhere, just hitting it somewhere. Just in a few spots, leaving those other the values to play along. Very important. 
if you do end up covering up everything again it's all good you can just you got too much light so then go back in there with darker values and then again here and there but not everywhere with your dark values and if it's too dark of course go in there with light values and you know really play them back and forth and get them playing together in a way that brings in your eye and where you can look at that and say okay now i see the reflections now i see this thing looking really shiny and the chrome effect is really taking place here so it just takes a minute you know you got to get in there and just play them in there but that's what i'm saying it should be fun the journey should be fun experimenting and playing these colors around and really just watching things happen that's what i love the most about it like i said i love to watch this come to life out of nowhere as i play this around and it's just like oh there it is there it is and here it comes and it's almost like when you were a kid and you watch a plane come in for landing it's like there it is it's gonna land oh my god there's the plane and here is it the picture it is getting somewhere all right so i'm gonna hit this white right in here we got more kind of shine and all that happening okay something like that and let's see now i want to take this white i'm going to wipe most of it off and now i'm going to take a little bit of this black i'm not going to clean my brush or get any more white in it because i want it darker and let's see i'm going to Actually, a little bit more black than that. I really want to contrast some of this white and this other grays here. See something like that. And maybe around this here. And let's see. Mm-hmm. Okay, and right here. See, so that gives us more definition and really shows us in more detail, you know, what's going on there with that. And then look, see right here. See, it gives it lift. It really puts the definition down and 3D effect in a little bit better like that. Okay, something like so. All right, so now let's see. Maybe I'll dance some of this more in, uh, more of this black into here like that. Alrighty. All right, I'm gonna clean this number two flat because I want all the dark value off of that because I wanna go again into just pure titanium white. And once again, see, I'm just building this up. Layer after layer, it gets stronger each time. See, like this. That's a stronger contrast now. That's a stronger contrast. Okay, and like that. Alrighty. Here we go. I'm going to take Again, more of that white. OK, 
Okay, something like that. So see, now we got this definitive, more chromed out looking, you know, bumper here between the background and now we're seeing that a little bit better. So just take some layers, like I said, some lines and some pushing stuff around a little bit. All good. Okay, something like that. Let's take some more pure titanium white again. And once again, I'm going to hit, boom, some of this. Maybe something like that. All right, cleaning that brush off again and getting my bristles all intact. In a picture, when you see things, it's not just the tires or the chrome that looks shiny, but it's also the rest of the cars. I put the highlights on here and I start to build that up. That's going to kind of communicate with this other stuff that tells overall that, wow, everything is so cherry and shiny and the chrome and the you know, it all comes together and it's like they share the story together. So if I just don't, if I don't put any other highlights on the truck, this will only be so bright. But when I do put the other highlights on, those highlights, like I said, will communicate that these are also really bright and shiny in addition to that. And I don't know, it's weird when a picture, you know, you see that it's, it's just the way it happens. It's like the pieces communicate a story to the eye in that kind of a way, it's kind of neat. So let's see, I'm going to now, let's see, take again, a little bit more black. And again, my number two flat brush. And I'm going to go in here again. And I want to sort of enhance this bit over here. Okay, it just kind of gives it some lift there. And also, right in here, if I add a little bit of black in here, it gives a little bit of dimension and you know, that, that kind of a thing there that's going on. So on this side, just on the very edge, you can see that black, that makes all the difference and it just really pops it out. Same thing here. I'm going to go around this and just really does something to that a little bit. Okay. All right. Let's see. Um, I'm thinking now, real quick, I just want to take some cat orange, a little bit of raw umber to that, maybe a little bit of yellow, and now some titanium white, maybe a little bit more yellow. And with this value here, it's this orangey, kind of dull, warm orange color in a way. I'm just going to take the corner of my smaller number two and I'll fill in this little instrument here that's on the our classic Ford here. Or actually, I'm sorry, I think this is a GMC. <laughs> Why did I say Ford? Oh my God. Okay. Now what I want to do is I kind of want to put this more into a shadow. So I'm going to add some more raw umber to that. And there we go. That's more like it, I think. Something like that. Okay, and, we'll, and I will do more to that in just a moment. Okay, let me see if I can get this GMC made. I'm going to go into some black now and raw umber together. I'm going to attempt to see if I can get, let's see.
see if I can get the GMC sort of thing happening here. I don't know, something like this. Just kind of free, free handing it, just going for it. Okay, let's see. Let's see. See? See the C? Can you see it? <laughs> uh, let's see. For reals, though, no, in all seriousness, I want to see if I can get the C to be. Not a B, but a C the right way. And maybe I can, I don't know. Maybe something like that. Um, I think what I wanna do is, what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna take a little bit of this maroon light color and I'm gonna go into this chrome area on here and I'm gonna just play this little reflection Maybe in here a little bit like this. And I think I'm going to go over this maybe just a little bit with some reflective you know, vehicle color in here, maybe. maybe. Something like that. I don't know. I can adjust that if I need to in a minute. Okay, so now what I want to do is I've got, I want to make this kind of a dark line and I'm gonna take again my small number two flat. I'm gonna take some raw umber to that. And let's see if I can go something like this. And like bring this over. Let's kind of show some body stuff happening there. Okay, and let's see what we can do. All right, let's have some fun now. I'm gonna start brightening and shining this guy up. Super awesome now. I'm gonna take now, think what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna mix up some values with my palette knife. So I got that right here and I'm gonna take now some magenta red and I'm gonna take a little cad orange into that. I want this orangey red color now. See something like this. And I'll just smash it down and go back and forth like I'm playing hockey here and smash it down again. And I'm going to scoop it up, kind of like that. And I'll lay this value right there. Okay, so that's a good pile there. And I think for now, I'm going to just work with this. And I won't, um, I'm not going to make any other colors just yet. So I'm going to take now my larger number four flat brush here. Um, this could be a number six for you. I don't know why these brushes are larger. Like I said, it's a different type of brush or brand or something, but it says number four. And again, whatever brush you're comfortable using. And I'm going to go with this bright value now. And I'm going to place this in its general location and really have this play against that darker uh, crimson color that I laid down. 
So I'm going to go in here with that and really do something like this. See, this really changes it up a bit. Okay, and I'm just going to play this in here like that. I don't want to cover up all this dark under here. Again, you want to leave that dark in there for sure. That is your good friend. Those darks, man, I tell you, they really change, or they really allow a contrast with these brighter, vibrant colors. And then it starts to show curvature and texture and all of those awesome things happening. And brings out that 3D look when you have those darks involved with the lights like it does. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is actually... I'm going to add a little bit of white and the reason is I don't really want to brighten it per se, but that's going to make this color more opaque so that it's not so transparent and it, it lays down and covers up things a little bit better. So see, let's go back in now. See that and that shows up a little bit better and you can see it's not as transparent now because white is a very opaque color. And sometimes when you have white, you can use it for the reason of not having a color be so transparent on you. And it fills in your painting a lot better and makes things more fuller that way, more saturated. Okay, so that is going to be right here with that vibrant color. And also right above this dark right here that I have going on, I don't want to cover that. I want to come up here now and pop against that dark with this lighter color. See, like that. See, I'm just pushing down, and then look, I can just take the paint. And even if I should cover up some of that dark again, as you know, I can go back in with that dark and put it right back where it was. All good. Not excited about that. Not going to get, oh my God. <laughs> what have you done? Uh, let's see. Let's get this up here a little bit more. And uh, all right, let's fill this in a bit. All right, so something like that. bring this over Okay, and then maybe I'll place some of that up here a little bit. Okay, so again, I can knock these colors and move them around now that I have all that base coat down. Super easy to play colors back and forth and have them lay down, and it's something to work with now. Like I said, I can really blast off from all of these different values that I've put down and coats that I've applied, and it gives me a platform and a playing field to move these colors and values around to play together in the way that they are supposed to and really give it that vibrance and shine like it should. Okay, I'm gonna load up some more of that more vibrant color and let's put that right here. Okay, so maybe there's a little, I don't know, something there like that. Okay, and, and maybe, and I'm just filming the rest of the canvas right there where the tire is. Okay, something like that. And I'll play some of these in, just kind of. Move some of this around. 
smooth over some of this. See, I can even use this to knock back some of this if I don't like it, or if I can smooth out the line. See, all good. Do all these things. Anything you want to do. All good. Let's pop this out of here. See that? Like that. Oh, yeah. Look at that. So I can totally make anything I want out of this. Okay. Just sort of blending this up a little bit so it's not super hard lines. Okay. And also over here, maybe a little bit. Okay. And maybe I'll come in on some of this a little bit. I don't know. something like that all right so right here there's a little bit of this I don't know like this part sticking out and in order to pop that out a little bit I want to take again some of this darker maroon and some I'm gonna take a little black actually into that too okay something kind of a little bit darker and See right, right here, it just kind of does this little thing here. And then it gets kind of like that. I'm going to now take with my same, what I say this was, number four flat brush. And I'm going to take a little bit more orange into this value here. And now I want to take white. I want to brighten this up a lot more. I'm going to start to make, I'm going to say something like this. Okay. And kind of in between this dark and this more red. And I'll take it up about... Oh, right here. Just barely using the edge of the flat brush. See that right here? And that is going to really bring this guy to life. Okay, gives it a little bit of some highlight there, striking it and showing some body on the truck there. And also, I'm going to use it right here to strike see i'm going to turn the brush over because i'm only using the edge or the corner actually i'm going to get some more paint on that okay so see that like that and see something like that now, here's where it gets really fun. Let's go up here like this. Maybe a little bit thicker here. Let's go. And I do apologize about the outside noise. Um, can't always predict or tell when someone's going to do some work on their house or their yard so i'll just go with it i don't know i don't really have any other time slots to do this right now so anyway so look we can get that highlight right there and then strike some like that you can make these however you want if you don't like it again cover it up with the other value it's all good and let's go next to this i'm going to that and maybe like 
that and then let's see it's going to be more not so curved right here more straight and then say like that and then And let's see, so we get some more of this white. So now I'm going to go something like this. Okay, just some details of the truck here, just some. Okay, you may not have maybe all that steady of a hand. I don't know. Do your best. <laughs> this is uh, probably what I'm going to do for that there. And it's all good. Okay, and then let's see. I'll have some of those striking highlights in here and in here. Something like that, maybe. Okay, and then also up here. Another striking highlight, and also maybe there's some right here. And then, you know, I don't know, something like that, maybe. And then, of course, let's see, let's put some right in here. So I am going to go in here with titanium white eventually on these, um, but I don't want to do it all just yet. I don't want to do it all at once. Okay, so here's what's something that's really neat. I'm going to take some of this red here not too much and watch this I can go like this and right where this is at I can come in here and just kind of have that fade up I'm going to reflect some of this uh, floor into here so see I'm just going to sort of lay that in here and adjust this here in a minute. But let's see, I can go kind of something like that, maybe. Yeah. And then. Kind of play these in here maybe i don't know i'm just kind of experimenting i want to see if i can pull this off here and um kind of do something like this maybe okay i don't know Let's see if I can what I can do here. Do something like this maybe, and let's see if this works. <laughs> so I'm gonna take now a little bit of this dark maroon. See like this. I'm gonna take some crimson with some raw umber. A little bit more crimson because this is a red car, of course. And I'm gonna try to see if I can get let's see maybe some of this darker color in here and i like 
this maybe and just kind of helps to show more of a shine within the car yeah so let's go boom like that you can't really see it too much it's very subtle but it's enough to give more of an enhancement i believe on how shiny this car is it's really reflecting you know these things well and you know say something like that so let's see and then right here just kind of do this I don't know I'm gonna Kind of get rid of these lines now i just kind of laid them out just so that i could have that reflection and know where to put these you know different things at so maybe something like that i don't know if you can see that too well but um i am gonna go now with a little bit of this brighter more vibrant color okay and i want to go yeah kind of like this i think See, now that I can see where my checkered lines are and where this is at, I can come in here now and sort of place this in here. Okay, something like that maybe, and right here. I don't know. Again, if this is too much, if this is too obvious, you know, where it's like, it's not really looking like a reflection, but more like something on the car instead of a reflection in the car, then I can always adjust my colors so that it looks according or it looks like it should, you know. All good. That's what's cool about acrylics. You can use really any color you want or value just to lay something out first and then go on top of it and adjust it however. So that way you know where you want your paint to be. It's not running amok on you and getting everywhere. So let's see, right here maybe. And up here, what? That value. Okay, so hopefully that will look right. I can always stand back and take a look if I need to. See, and maybe if I have it fade off like this, I can achieve that just a little bit, yeah. Let's do this. Let's go with pure titanium white now. Here's where it's gonna get really shiny. Okay, I'm just going to get, after cleaning my number six flat brush, or sorry, number four flat brush. I'll tell you, the looks of this thing, it looks like a number six, but it says a number four. I wonder if they made a mistake at the factory when they made this particular set. I don't know, but again, use the brush you're comfortable with. <laughs> it's all good. And with that, let's go ahead and strike, boom, some of that. And I don't want to cover up all that faded look, but watch if I come in here and I just kind of stir this up just a little bit, just a little bit of pressure, a little bit of pain at a time. And I can really come in here and I can even do with my finger and go over it a bit. See, like that, that settles it a bit. 
See, and I can even kind of do this and tap it. And I can fade it out on the edges a little bit on top of this lighter red that I put down when I mix with that orange. And really just pops out a glow in a way, in a, as well as this shine. Just kind of enhances it a bit. Okay, and on here, Okay, and let's throw some of that right in here. Okay, I'm going to take some of that. Let's see, I'll even hit some of that. And okay, just getting more white. Um, all right, so I was just gonna. Just some more of this right here. So just however you want to put these in, it's all good. And what I'm going to do is back in here, it's more of in a shadow. So, well, actually, before I do that, I'm going to get some more white again. Uh, I'll just continue to go on with these direct highlights here. And let's see. Let's put one right, okay, strike in here, and striking up there maybe, a little bit less, or not as thick as a line. Okay, and also up in here. Okay, maybe something like that. And maybe something in here a little bit too. I don't know. It's all good. If I don't like a value, I'll just cover it up. I said all good. Okay, taking more white. something like that okay and then striking a highlight there maybe okay and also down here Okay, and look at how cherry and shiny that looks with all these things playing together now. Isn't that nice? We got this reflective, you know, checker floor in there. We got the bright highlights, and together all of this talks and tells that story, like I said, and tells us really how cherry and shiny this classic GMC really is, and super cool. I love, love just playing these things around. And like I said, when this comes to life, it's like my favorite thing. 
super cool love to watch and i hope you guys are enjoying this and i hope this is a clear lesson again let me know in the comments if there's anything that you'd like me to do different or maybe something that you want to see painted that you would like to follow along and be able to do and pull off or see how it's done maybe you're there's a picture that you've tried to paint and maybe it didn't turn out like you wanted it to and maybe you want to see i don't know another way to do it um like i said i'm here to show what i can and teach what i've learned and as i continue to learn continue to really show this and help inspire and unlock some things and allow you guys to really turn loose on anything you want to make that help to make that possible and be a part of that. And that that's a good feeling if I can be a part of enhancing somebody's life in some way or bringing a blessing in some kind of way then that would be awesome I hope this blesses you guys and like I said you're having fun and getting a lot out of it Okay, so as you see with Earth the Black, at this smaller number two, I'm just taking and going around this again to give that lift and show that recessed kind of look where the body's kind of overlapping the headlamp here just a bit. And it's, uh, yeah, something like that. Okay, and over here too, I want to kind of clean this up a bit maybe. Just a little bit more. Let's see, you can always go back in and redefine stuff. It's all good. Okay, something like that. And yeah. Okay. Now, what I want to do is again take some black on that small number two. And again, I want to show some shadow and some lift. And it just also helps to enhance some dimension, as I said before. And yeah, helps build that up. Okay, maybe around here a little bit. Okay, so something like that. See, that's all good. And let's go with some lift under the door handle here. I just kind of wanted to get this. See, so, and we'll just kind of throw in something like that and just maybe do something of this nature. Yeah. Okay. And now it's just pure titanium white. I want to strike just some of this rear view mirror kind of thing here. See that like that maybe? Something like that. I kind of want to fill this in. It looks a little washed out because I only did one coat here and I didn't worry about it. But I'm going to go ahead now and work some more on that. So I've got my number six now larger number six so to you this might be a number eight or even a number ten but again use what you're comfortable with and i'm gonna go in again with some of that gray okay just like this and i'm going to Come back in, see when I do this, this is gonna really clean up some of these lines and make them more, you know, not so wobbly and of course not so washed out looking because look, I'm putting another coat down and it really makes all the difference. See, and I can come up to this part of the chrome here and it really helps to define where the floor is and where the car is. And so they're not getting lost in each other, you know, and kind of looking too frayed out and Real messy in that kind of way. Cleans it up a bit. Okay, something like that. See, and again, I can go around this. 
that tells us where the car is and where the floor is and all of that stuff so yeah Okay, and I don't want to use too much water because I don't want it thinning out on top of this. I want it to cover this stuff here and all of that. So, and what if I can push this shadow back? It makes it more realistic looking like that. Okay. Okay, like that. Okay, I just want to cover up all the canvas here if I can and just really just, like I said, just fill this in a little bit better. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is get that dark value, or darker value, I don't know why I said dark value, but darker value now for the other part of this piece here, and let's go in with this very dark gray, let's enhance this. Let's get this where it goes. Something like that. Okay, just kind of have that run off the canvas like that is what I'm going to do there. Okay, and again. So, like right here, see this? I can bring this up and connect like that. Boom. All good. And now we don't have that gap there anymore. See, anytime you want to fix something fix it whenever you can sit there till whenever it's not gonna not gonna matter too much just like that again sometimes using the full edge of the brush other times just the corner if I want to get like in here see that and then the full edge like right here to get that line all the way down and then the whole brush right here to fill it all in so, doing that to fix that there, and then see right here, I want to make the rest of this square the same value so it doesn't look like a hard line, you know, in that kind of a way. Awesome. That'll do it just fine, and let's see. Just want to get the canvas covered up there, so I just kind of went a little bit further there. Okay, and going around this tire and being careful not to cover it up or any of that, so. Okay, like that. And 
Let's come in here now and boom. Just laying that more down, getting some more pigment on my brush as it runs out. Okay, just like this. Get that back in place here. Just lining up these lines, just bringing it down, and just like that. All good. Okay, grab more paint. Okay, something like that, I'm thinking. And, well, let's see. See how there's this hard line here and it's not as dark there? I wanna fix that. So with that, uh, let's see. Let's get some more blacky black involved. All right, see, yeah, like that, see that? Now we're doing the same color. And now it looks better that way. Okay, so. I'm gonna take just a little bit of black. Okay, just a teeny bit. I'm just gonna glaze this. I'm not gonna really, see I'm taking a lot of that paint off the brush with my number four flat brush here. Number six flat brush, I mean. <laughs> I get, with these stiver, with these bigger sizes, it's like, okay, which one is it again? Uh, so with that said, I'm going to cast right here a bit of some shadow and again not a whole lot of paint because I want to I want my floor to still show a little bit and let's see I'm gonna go with the shadow casting right under here and 
and it's going to kind of come around kind of like this. I'll even get it right there just a little bit. Anyway, just show some separation. Okay, so a little bit more black. And I'm going to go see this. You can still see the, the floor here as I do this. And I'm going to get just a little bit more black. And right under here, right under here, I want to show the darkest part of the shadow as it's coming, you know, uh, away from the truck here. See, kind of like this. And then I want to bring it out as paint runs off this brush. So there's just a little bit of paint on this brush. And I'm just going to run this out like that. See that? And over here as well. And as you can see, it's it's got this like shadow play going on here. A little bit more black here involved. Not too much. You don't want to cover. You still want to be able to see the floor here as the shadow is casting on it. Because as you know, you can see through a shadow, but it's a little darker. And yeah, we'll do something like this. See that? Be something like that. Okay, cleaning off that number six flat brush. And again, doing this guy, keeping all those bristles intact like so. Okay, so here is what I want to do is I want to take my smaller number two flat brush and I kind of want to create, well, actually, I'm sorry, I'm going to take my number four flat brush. I'm more comfortable with this for what I'm going to do. And in the same way, I'm going to take a little bit of black, a little bit of raw umber to that. Not much. Okay, a little bit of paint on the brush. And I want to come out here and sort of do something like this. So it's kind of reflect this uh, vehicle into the, in here pretty good. See, like that. And let's see, it's going to come over. It's going to kind of do something like so. See, just a little bit of paint on the brush and I can really scrub in over some of this floor here. The reflection of this truck. And I'm going to just take this over this see I'm just kind of scratching this over it's not really a whole lot of paint like I said I don't want to cover this up I just want to glaze this darker color over it and kind of do something like this and what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take some of this tire detail so now I'm gonna grab my number uh, my smaller number two flat brush and I'm going to take a little bit of this white okay and I'm gonna kind of go like this and just kind of show some of this chrome you know detail in here a bit Just kind of something like this. Just a little bit, yeah. Okay, something like that. And 
Maybe there's some more little things happening here where the truck is kind of reflecting maybe some of that under the floor. Okay, and then right down here, this is going to be really cool. I'm going to go kind of something like... like that and I'm gonna have some of this kind of come down like that and you know do something like that okay and now I'm gonna take some black to that and I'm gonna go do something like this and then also right here I'm gonna settle some of those lines down just a bit and also right here so it's not super wild so it's more like a reflection in the floor instead of something on the floor so it's important to settle these down a little bit like that those reflections see that and now I'm gonna clean this number two flat okay I'm gonna dry it off really well okay my fingers i can wipe it on my shirt i hope you're wearing painting clothes because acrylics will permanently ruin clothes and you probably knew that already maybe <laughs> just in case uh so let's take now a little bit more titanium white into here let's reflect just some of these things just directly like that and then i'll do something like that Maybe that. Okay, I don't know, something like this, maybe. Okay, so maybe something like that. Let's see what we got. Let me stand back again. As I look at this, I'm pretty happy with that. I like the reflections. I think that pop and shine really comes to life. And I think I'm going to go with that. All right, so Okay, guys, well, you can totally mess with this as much as you'd like. It's really up to you, as little or as much, and you can continue to build layers. And as I said, the more times you do that, the stronger the contrast gets, the smoother things get, the more saturated and fuller, and the stronger the three-dimensional look becomes. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take my script liner brush now, lots of water, titanium white, and pulling as I turn it to a point. And I'm going to go ahead and I think right here on perhaps this dark part of this painting right here, I'm going to sign this piece. And I want to thank you guys so much for tuning in and joining again. I hope this lesson has been a success for you and that it was clear and enjoyable. And please let me know if there's anything that I can do to make these better for you. Anything at all that you'd like to see painted maybe. And we'll totally paint this together. And so there it is. So go ahead and play with this. And... Let me see your results. You can post them on my Facebook like page down in the description box at the Acrylic Asylum. And 
let me hear again what you guys are thinking and how this went for you. I'd totally love to hear your feedback and anything I can do to improve these lessons. And again, thank you guys so much for all your support. And until next time, happy painting, everyone.